Hello, and welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent converts and seasoned fans alike. My name is Shannon, and I am joined today, as I am all the time, by my best friend and favorite Shawal, <laughs> Angelica. How are you, girl? I'm good. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful because today we are going to talk about our favorite thing to talk about besides K-pop in a broader sense, which is specifically shiny. Ah, uh, shiny. shiny. Shining, shiny. Yes. We had, we've had a few listeners lately be like, you know, asking us how we feel about this new comeback and like asking us about shiny in general. So we were like, we, let's do a whole shiny episode because yeah. it's our podcast and we can do it. We, we can want. do whatever we want. But also because like their 10th anniversary comeback just came out yes. like, the week b- before we recorded this. Yeah. Um, so we've like had a whole shiny week. It's been amazing. Um, I'm so touched by all the people who like reached out to us and were like, how are your show hearts? Um, because our hearts are very full. They're very and, full. <laughs> um, in order to deal with it, we decided to do dedicate an entire episode to shiny. Exactly. So, okay, we got to get, so we're gonna, we're just gonna do this. Like this whole episode is going to be about shiny. So we're going to yeah. start with like essentially an audio version of a member profile, I guess. Yeah, I guess, like, think of this entire episode as, like, an audio version of a intro fan site, I guess, because we're going to talk about member profiles, we're going to do a timeline of their discography, we're going to run down a few of our favorite songs, mm-hmm. and then we're also going to, of course, talk about this newest comeback, so we'll, it'll all lead up to what's happening now, um, and even our recommendation, or not our recommendation, our random game. Yeah, it won't be so random. Band. We're gonna watch. Yeah. We're gonna watch a shiny video. Yeah. So, okay, to get started, I'm gonna let Shiny introduce themselves. Ah, uh, Yes, they are shining, shiny. I thought for a second when you said that you were gonna let them introduce themselves that we were gonna hear the "My name is Minho." <laughs> no, no, not yet. We can talk about that when we get there. <laughs> but uh, all right, so. The name of this group is Shiny. Mm-hmm. Shiny. Spelled the the style the style guide is capital S, capital H, capital I, capital N, two little E's. Yes. You have to write it like that. Mm-hmm. That's their logo. That's how it's <laughs> written, just like how XO is in all caps or TVXQ has an exclamation point at the right. end. Like that's just how you spell it. Yeah. Um and it comes it's like shine, meaning light, and then they added the suffix of E to it so that it means uh givers of light. Right. E E is like a um it's it's a, a subject marking particle. You either use e or ga, depending on the consonant the previous word ends in. Ooh, Korean lesson for you. So yeah, that's where it comes from. Shiny. Um, so through the members, uh, the first member, the leader, the oldest member is Onyu. That's his stage name. Mm-hmm. Birth name Lee Jinki. Yeah. His birthday is December fourteenth, nineteen eighty nine. Mm-hmm. Um, how you can tell. Onu, we're going to, like, describe them. So if yeah. you're looking at a picture of Shiny and you want to know who's who. So Onu, like, has really pretty lips and, like, a squinty smile and, like, a very round face. That's what I was going to say. He has the roundest face. Um, he also, like, I would say he's not the tallest, but he, I think, is the thickest, mm-hmm. which is not to say that he's, like, big by any means, shape, or form. Right. But, like, he's just the thickest of the five. Yeah. Um, super round face, very big eye smiles. Like, his cheeks go up really high when he smiles. Um, and he yeah. has sort of, like, a soft voice. Yes, but it's very, like, powerful. He's, like, mm-hmm. a real – he's a singer, for yeah, sure. Yeah, but it has, like, a very, like – roundness or like a fuzzy edge sort of to Uh like the timbre of his voice. It's kind of like back in his throat. Yeah, it's nice. Um, And then just some fun things about Onu. He loves chicken. Like he (laughs) loves fried chicken so much. And he also loves making terrible dad jokes. Oh, he makes the worst jokes, but they are sometimes the funniest. They He cracks me up. I yeah. love that sense of humor. Uh, next in the lineup is Jonghyun, Kim Jonghyun, birth name. His birthday, April 8th, 1990. Um, he was the main vocalist and a song, like, pretty much... Like a song, like a songwriter for Shiny. Mm-hmm. I think he was a songwriter and a composer, like in his own right. Really, yes. aside from Shiny, like he did write a lot of the songs for Shiny. We'll talk about that as we go through their discography. But he also uh, was a solo artist and he was a compo- like an SM composer that wrote a lot of songs for other SM artists. Definitely, totally the poet artist that mm-hmm. he called himself. Yes. Um, 
His face, he has huge eyes, like yeah. gigantic eyes and a very sharp face. Sharp cheekbones, sharp chin, mm-hmm. he has big mouth. The, yeah, <laughs> I would say loud he with. has like the most distinctive features. He has a very like strong, sculptured face. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I think he's the shortest. Yes. Um, but probably has like the broadest shoulders. Yeah. He, and was, he was the first one to get buff, like for yeah, sure. For sure. For <laughs> sure. Um, but he's so skinny, like he turns to the side and, and he just disappears. disappears. Um, I remember thinking that when he came out with Hallelujah, because most of that song is just like sideways body rolls. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, what else? What was I just going to say about Sean Young? Oh, he's, you can tell him because he's the one that's belting his heart out. Yeah. The, uh, the hardest. What a voice. <laughs> um, and then like some personality things about him uh very very dramatic yeah. loved to yell god he loved <laughs> to yell at people um but like also the like most sensitive mm-hmm. weepy like just softest, softest. <laughs> And oh, and and but like the drama, like when mm-hmm. he cried, when they would win things, like full on wailing, like yeah. not just like silent, pre- <gasps> no, 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 no. sobbing, oh, yeah. sobbing, yeah. inconsolable unless in Mino's arms. Yes, like yes, yeah, um, yeah. He was he's la- loud for how small he was. That was that's <laughs> so definitely loud, how so you loud. could in describe singing him. and crying and laughing <laughs> and in everything. Um, next up is Key, uh, his. Birth name, Kim Ki-bum, and his birthday is September 23rd, 1991. Uh, Ki is one of the other vocalists, and at the beginning, he was, like, the other rapper. Mm-hmm. Like, him and Mino had to share all the rap yeah. lines. He still does. He, yeah. They he still, still do. Yeah. If they ever do, yeah, yeah. So, mm-hmm. Ki is a bit of a vocalist rapper. He's kind of, like, the wild card of the group, I would say, in the terms of, like, the role that he can play because he also sometimes gets like dance breaks or like he'll be on his own whereas the other four will be like paired yeah. up then he's always the one on his own or have like a big so like a big mm-hmm. you know high note in a song or he's very yeah. versatile in the and group. he'll have um, I think usually like the loudest styling like hair color yes. costumes whatever like he is he's that the wild card I think and if to see c- and to pick him out of a lineup, I always say that like he has the same face as the Disney Peter Pan. Yes, he like he totally <laughs> does. Like his eyes are kind of like long, but also kind of small. Mm-hmm. And like I he don't know, he has high cheekbones mm-hmm. and a small chin, and uh, he has a scar in his eyebrow. Yes, so there and when people and people think that he shaves it on purpose, yeah. and he's like, no, this is real. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like things about Key, Key loves fashion and his dogs. Yep. And he's very sassy and sharp witted, um, very funny. He does a lot of musical theater. Uh, mm-hmm. That's sort of like his he we've mentioned him before when we talked about our special projects. He did like a quick little duo spinoff with called Two Art. Mm-hmm. Um, but most of his solo work is in acting, whether it's on the stage or um, on TV. Yeah, um, he he is just like always key. Like that's mm-hmm. the only way I can describe him. And he like. Because I feel like he's never fake because, like, you know, they'll be doing mm-hmm. an interview or whatever, and he's just not feeling it, and he's not going to pretend that he's not not no. feeling it. Like, he's just very, like— He doesn't hide I'm, any of his emotions on his face. Like, it's just all out there for you to see. But he's very consistent. Yes. And he's a nice person. I think he, like, gets—I feel like he gets a rep for being, like, a bitchy queen, but, like, he's not— <laughs> Like, he's not. Like, no, he's he a little a nice sassy, person. but he's, like, he's he's a kind he's a kind boy. Um, and then next in the lineup, you've heard a ton about him from us, is Mino, mm-hmm. Che Minho. Uh, his birthday is December 9th, 1991. Um, and he is the rapper of Shiny. Yes. <laughs> um, these days he gets to sing, like we've said before, but, mm-hmm. like, um, yeah, he got the, like, the sarcastic nickname of, like, Rap God Mino. Yeah. Like, from this very <laughs> terrible song that Shiny did really early on. Um, um, yeah, it's it's considered, they call it like the taboo video. Like the forbidden. Shiny. Because <laughs> um, it's so embarrassing where he like does a really cheesy rap that introduces like nicknames for each member or whatever. <laughs> Um, but he wasn't, he was found and joined the group. He was recruited yeah. because he was so beautiful. Like yes. that was, he was not recruited for his musical ability. So that's why he was sort of thrown into the rap role 
at first. Yeah. Um, and he sort of, he recently actually said that like he, cause he, like I said, was not recruited for his musical talents, uh -huh. works really hard to, to learn all of the dances. Yeah. He says he still has no sense of rhythm and he just yes, has to that's like exactly what I was gonna memorize say. it. Mm -hmm. That sounds, it seems crazy. No, it makes complete sense to me because, okay, so they were recently on the show called Radio Star where they're doing this interview and Mino says, they're, they, the hosts ask like, oh, Mino is said to always be dancing for the next verse. Like, what does that mean? And Mino said, oh, sometimes I rush because I don't listen to the beat. I just memorize the moves. Like I memorize the combination. <laughs> and so sometimes I go too fast because I'm thinking about what comes next. That's what I do. Oh. That's what I real. I was like, oh my God, of course. <laughs> like that's, it all makes sense to me now. So um, I really, I feel a lot closer to me now. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> have something in common. I feel you, man. Um, <laughs> I get what you mean. What he looks like is beautiful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's the tall, hot one. He's tall. End he has story. Giant, <laughs> giant eyes like a baby deer. <laughs> like, he kind of looks like Bulbasaur. Yeah, but so pretty. Just just the prettiest, prettiest, prettiest. And he's really tall, so you can he just He has, like, long out. legs like a gazelle. <laughs> oh, he's gorgeous. <laughs> um, okay, last is our makne, our baby Taemin. Taemini! Lee Taemin is his birth name, and his birthday is July 18th, 1993. Um, and he's the main dancer. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a wonderful dancer. He's incredible. He's just, I mean, unbelievable the way that he dances. Um, he is the main dancer, but he's also a, a, has been a lead vocalist for that. I feel like him, Onu, Jean Young, like the three of them shared sort of all the vocal, the main vocal parts yeah. from the beginning. Yes. He's um, definitely super improved as a singer since mm -hmm. the early days. Yes. Like they, I mean, they like forced him to sing, but like it yeah. took, but he was also the youngest by a ton. Like mm -hmm. he was 15 in Six. Korean age when they debuted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like right. it's crazy. Um, but Taemin looks his, well, he's beautiful. He's like really, really pretty. Yeah. Like super pretty. Mm -hmm. Like androgynously pretty. He and has he's had the same face like since he was. Face. Yeah. And he's had the exact same face since he was a kid. If you like look mm -hmm. up, there's pictures of him and he's like five years old. He has the exact same face that he has now. It's so crazy. Um, but yeah, he, he always, <laughs> he blinks a lot and his eyes look very empty sometimes. Yeah. Um, like things take a little bit like a moment longer to process yeah. sometimes is what it seems like. Yeah, no, I, d I don't think that he's like dumb, but he seems like one of those people that just has like, like, you know, those people where it's like, what were you thinking about? And they were like, oh, nothing. And they meant it. Like, yes. I feel like his, he <clears throat> completely no, shuts off. He's and is one of like those people <laughs> that is so, such a physical genius. Mm -hmm. Like he is a genius in the way that he moves his body and the way that he can like create choreography uh -huh. that like he lives in his own world a little bit yeah. you know like he's just sort of always dazed and confused and a little bit like he is a um his nickname is magic hands because mm -hmm. he loses everything literally everything um the the number of stories that we could tell are countless for how many times he's lost things um like once he walked out of the airport in only slippers because he had lost his shoes uh-huh um he loses his phone constantly yeah so it's i can't believe he hasn't gotten into some kind of like really crazy scandal because he's probably lost 15 cell phones oh like i know my favorite story though is uh he just told it on that radio star interview where they were getting ready to go to the airport and so he like in a rush thoughtlessly just packed packed everything and um, had like just woken up and packed everything. And then the manager came in saying like, oh, we're, it's time to go. And their luggage had already been taken away. And Timmy realized that he had packed all of his clothes, yeah. even the clothes that he had meant to wear to the airport. And so was just wearing underwear and was like, what yeah, do I, I had do? to borrow like <laughs> sweatpants from this guy and a shirt yeah, he from just here. Borrowed and... clothes from the mem from his members, oh but God. he's <laughs> such a silly, yeah. He's silly defi fool. He's definitely the baby, and like <laughs> yeah. he definitely like takes a like 
takes advantage of the fact that he's the baby. Like, they're all very forgiving to his, like, ditzy taming stuff. Because, yeah. like, he's just their baby. And, like, what are you going to do? But we will, ta- when we, later on in this episode, when we talk about, like, Shiny today and their current comeback, like, we will talk about all the ways that Timmin has grown and oh, matured. Yes. Like, not only as a, a human being, but also <laughs> as an artist. Yeah. Um, he is truly very impressive um, artistically. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, 10 years is a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, so more info, basic info about shiny, the fandom, it's called sh- the shiny world, mm-hmm. which we shorten to Shawol. Yeah. That's our fan name. Yes. So like if you're a BTS fan, you're an army. If you're a shiny fan, you're a Shawol. Yes. Um, and the color, the fan color is pearl aqua, mm-hmm. which is like a very beautiful aqua. Yeah. Color. But shiny for shiny. Yeah. Um, and just some like facts before we jump in here, just to get it all out there. Shiny has been nominated for 86 awards, won 60 of them. They have 57 music show wins under their belts as of this recording. Um, and they have recorded 174 songs up to this point, not including the next two albums. So like, this is a, gr- this is a real group, guys. We're talking about some real K-pop here. They are widely recognized to be some of the best vo- live vocalists of K-pop as well as some of the most like s- some of the best dancers in K-pop um, because of their very they're well known for their w- highly synchronized and very complex dance routines that's their thing mm-hmm. um, and they're also known I want to put this analogy or like comparison out there right off the bat to sort of like, if you're coming in here, you know nothing about K-pop and you want to try to like root it in something to get, to build your picture in your head. Um, They're known as the princes of K-pop, but I would like to posit that they are both the princes of K-pop and also the prince of K-pop because I think of them in the way, like my love for them is like my love for Prince. Uh They are androgynously beautiful. Yeah. Known for being skinny, but also um, stylish, trend-setting experimenters of both fashion and music, and they've never seen a high-heeled boot that they didn't love. Yes. That's a really good analogy. (laughs) Yeah. Shiny's really amazing in how many different things that they've done over the years. So let's get into the years. We're just We got 10 years of history here, so we're going to go through it. I'm taking off my jacket so we can get serious. (laughs) All right. Yeah, we we're all set here. I got I brought my shiny lunchbox full of wine in a can <laughs> and my favorite shiny mug so I can look at their faces. I have a Mino tank top on. We're ready to do it. Yeah, I spent my whole morning watching different shiny things. It was a fantastic way to start the day. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we're gonna go back in time to May twenty fifth, two thousand eight. This was the day of Shiny's first debut stage. Uh, their first music video actually came out three days before that. The official anniversary is the 25th, but I just thought it was interesting that the like the world saw them for the first time three days earlier. But this was the the May 25th is their date because that is their debut stage. Yes, so that was like. The mm-hmm. birth of Shiny. Um, I just thought this was cute and wanted to play it. Um, so, you know, a few minutes ago, I played Shiny doing their Pinan mm-hmm. Shiny Imida, like their, their greeting. Their greeting. Um, and that was just like, that clip was from like a year or two ago. Here is them doing their greeting on their debut day. And just listen to these children. <laughs> Babies. Babies. Actual babies. Oh, my God. Babies. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. So they were small. They were so small. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, they're, we've play, I think we've, we've played their debut stage on this show before. We did. When we talked about debut stages and comeback stages, we chose replay to watch. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you heard a little bit of the hook at the end of that clip. Of just that now. clip. Yeah. Um, replay is truly like still one of my favorite shiny songs ever. Like it is oh. such a good song. 100%. It's one of my favorite shiny songs. It's also one of my favorite K-pop songs in general. Um, it's, it does not get old. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. Um, so like they're styling at first, like they're a brand new band. So they were just mm-hmm. like, they were trying to sell, like, they were young boys. They weren't trying to, like, yeah. get a, past that. Like, no. they're in, like, you know, sparkly hoodies and, like... They were just, the like, colorful boys next door. Like, yeah. they were skinny. They were not 
promoted as being like masculine or sexy at all. Um, they wore really bright clothes, really skinny jeans, like high top sneakers, but they had really simple makeup and hair when they first debuted. So it was like very colorful clothes and like plain yeah. face. And since the like subject of their title single, Nuna no Muyepa, is like older girl. older girl is so pr so they were like they were young and that mm -hmm. was like part of it that was they weren't thing. trying to get around that at all yeah um so yeah that was like their debut and people liked them enough and like i mean it didn't it wasn't like a smash you know like black pink right out of the gate like they're huge no replay but, uh peaked at number eight yeah so you know it did well but it definitely didn't go straight to number one um and replay was released as an ep Yes, just their quick little first first baby album. Mm -hmm. um, and then later in that year, in August, they did their second single, which was Love Like Oxygen. Mm -hmm, because they released their first full studio album, which was called Shiny World. Yes. Or The Shiny World, excuse me. <laughs> um, and then uh, just like a funny thing about this. So I'm going to play the beginning of this song really quickly because it like it has a pretty um, notable like first line. Um, and then, yeah, I'll explain why in just a second. Hold on. <laughs> So that's the beginning of the song, which then created a slight bit of a meme, if you will. Oh, we should point out that Jean Young is the one that is singing that opening. Yes, line. yes. And he like very purposefully like wanted it to sound like Michael Jackson. Yes. Like that was his intention. <laughs> um, but here's what Onu thought it sounded like. <laughs> I couldn't, I, I couldn't, feel, yeah. to be fair to both, <laughs> oh, sorry. to be fair to both of them, that is a good Michael Jackson impression mm -hmm. on John Young's part, and it is a great John Young impression <laughs> on Ono's yeah, part. Yeah, no, everybody wins. <laughs> I was trying to find more clips because I, like, know that, like, a member of Red Velvet has done that, like, a couple other idols have also done that impression on, the in, <laughs> on like, radio shows and stuff because it's, like, it's pretty easy to, like, mm -hmm. impersonate. Um, but Love Like Oxygen is a really fun song, but it also was not not a shiny it wasn't their song originally no it was a remake yes mm -hmm. um they had a couple of remakes early in their career that we'll talk about um but this was one of them where they just like had rewritten the lyrics to an existing song mm -hmm. um an existing song by like a danish artist or something like yeah. that i don't remember i didn't honestly didn't write down the name but um it was their first music show win yes so after replay love like oxygen is what sort of got them a little bit more attention and acclaim. Yeah, so they won their very first music show, and it was so sweet, and everybody cried, and we're so proud of them. Um, another funny thing that I loved about 2008, uh, it was it's very early for a group to have a reality show, but uh, in August, like around the release of Love Like Oxygen, uh, Shiny put out a show called Shiny's Yunhanam, which like means a man who dates older women and it was 11 episodes where shiny would like they would bring in an older girl and then they would do some kind of competition to win a date with the girl and then they'd go on a date with the girl and it is so awkward i can't <laughs> even it's the most awkward thing that like ever existed but it is so it's funny the whole thing is on youtube like it has survived so there's a lot of really great <laughs> old shiny on YouTube, thank God. Uh, we will be mentioning several sh highlights throughout this uh, throughout this episode. I wanted to move, point out before we move on from yeah. this first uh, album that because we've talked a lot about how, especially in our most recent like generation episodes, how shiny is part of the second generation, right? But a marker that sets a lot of third generation groups apart is that they play a large hand or role in like the writing and composition of their and creation of their own music. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to point out that from this very first album, Shiny World, Mino in particular has always had a writing credit in their music because SM made Mino write most of his own raps. Yeah. Why they did that to him, I don't know, but they made him write most <laughs> of it. So like on the Shiny World, their first album, he is a has a writing credit on five different songs. Um, but we're going to be po bringing out like or bringing up, pointing out um, all the times that Shiny like started to as they grow in their artistry, like 
have a larger and larger hand in yes. the control of their music. Yes, definitely. Um, so, yeah, that was Love Like Oxygen, and Love Like Oxygen came with a full album, like mm-hmm. came out with a full album called The Shiny World. Um, so then in October, just two months later, they did their first repackage, uh, and that album was called Amigo. Mm-hmm. The title track was called Amigo. Um, that song just always makes me think of concerts. Like, I never play it, but, like, on Shi- whenever they do it at a Shiny World and they, like, run around and get so crazy, like, Amigo! It's, like, a very yelly song. Um, yeah, I do not love that song. But... First repackage, that's notable. Yeah, Gotta and point it out. from that first album, um, Shiny won the Best New Male Group Award at the Mamas, uh, and also the Newcomer Album of the Year at the Golden Discs. Yeah, so their first year was, like, good to them. Mm-hmm. They got a they got a music show win. They won some big awards at the end of the year. Um, it's technically 2009, but they also got uh, Best Newcomer at the Soul Music Awards, which happens, like, right at the beginning mm-hmm. of the year. So their first, their first foray was, like, real good. They did a great job um then may 25th 2009 their next ep which was called romeo and the title track was juliet yes um this is another non shiny song um no it is an instrumental remake of corbin blue's song deal with it (laughs) which was for the soundtrack of a disney channel original movie about jump roping (gasps) i remember that movie. I do yes. not remember what it was called. I, I don't definitely either. didn't watch it, but I do remember the previews. Yes, it. because the previews had him had and had the music yeah, yeah, video yeah. Deal with it. Who? But like then that become became Juliet. Who? So, uh yeah, I love Juliet. It's I love really Juliet. fun. Juliet. Um the song is really great. The music video is hilarious. It looks very cheap in comparison to many of their other music videos. They're wearing super brightly colored outfits of yeah this course. was what this was like a period of time where they all like power rangers or something were yes. just like dressing in singular colors mm-hmm. like they one were of them is green and one of them is pink one of them is yellow <laughs> one of them is orange like and so they weren't necessarily wearing like all solid one color like a like a paint strip but they would be wearing like mino might be wearing like a green and white like tie-dye tank top with green solid color green pants and like a sparkly green belt or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. like but they very... were wearing colored skinny jeans mm-hmm. which we brought up a couple episodes ago like girls generation like started this trend of colored skinny jeans and shiny kept doing it yeah like, especially because like we said shiny was known for their dancing like they were so in sync um and a lot of their dancing emphasizes angles and mm-hmm. um and like fast footwork and so the skinny jeans are meant to draw the eye to the legs yes um but what's really funny to me about julia is that the music video has them in these like pretty like w- like very brightly colored but otherwise like non fancy clothes yeah, it's just, right it's just, just like tie dye t-shirts. t-shirts yeah and like high top sneakers and then they're wearing like party city cheap new year's eve masks yes. <laughs> they're walking around in like the settiest of sets that just has like a couple of those shimmery glitter curtains hanging yep. and they're like with their cheesy masks like they're supposed to be at some kind of masquerade ball it's but... supposed to be like that scene in the leonardo dicaprio romeo and juliet movie where they're at the masquerade oh right that's what it's supposed oh, to be oh right of course but it's like the <laughs> The cheap, like, high school dance version of that masquerade ball. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And not even a high school prom, like a high school, like, homecoming or something, like, very casual. Um, So, Juliet, or Romeo, Mm -hmm. do you have any? Um, John Young and Mino both wrote the lyrics for Juliet. Because, like we said, it was an instrumental remake of that Corbin Blue song, but they wrote completely new lyrics for it. It won first place at Music Bank. Um... And that's kind of all I have to say about Romeo because it was it was just an EP. Yeah, um, but it's a good song. It's classic, classic mm-hmm. shiny. Um, okay, so now I hear I feel like we're getting to like a decent milestone here. <laughs> In October six October sixteenth two thousand nine is when Shiny puts out their album two thousand nine, the year of us, and mm-hmm. its title track is Ring Ding Dong. Yes, I want to just point out before we continue with this, uh, this was another EP. Ah, uh, yes, sorry. The current I only. Bring that up because the current comeback is specifically shiny six as in their sixth 
full, full st- album. studio album. So I want to like make the distinction. Yes, 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 between EPs and albums. Yeah, yeah, totally yeah. fair. Um, so yeah, 2009, The Year of Us, and Ring Ding Dong is the title track. Mm-hmm. And Ring Ding Dong is one of those songs that I feel like if you, like, K-pop fans who, like, maybe know nothing about Shiny, know Ring, like, everyone knows Ring yeah, Ding yeah, Dong. Yeah. But it's also one of those songs that, like, if you are introducing someone to K- there's a Shawl, like, meme or joke that's, like, if I'm going to introduce someone new to Shiny or to K-pop, I'm going to start with something a little bit more mainstream, like, um, like, View or something, uh-huh. right? I'm not going to throw them into the deep end with Ring Ding Dong, right. because that is where it's, like, hello, this is where all of the hell we weird shit part of K-pop is. Yeah. Like, that's what Ring Ding Dong is. Yeah. It's that other side of the spectrum that's, like... It's one of those songs that, like, the first... me almost. Yeah. And it's one of those songs that the first time you hear it, you're like, this is a joke, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> this isn't a real song. And then you're singing it later because it's actually a bop. A we have to play a clip. Where That's going to be... Our oh, whole, you're right. You're right. You're it, right. You're right. Stay tuned. Okay, fine. You'll get to hear the whole song later in the episode. Um, so Ring Ding Dong has like a hella catchy dance. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a dance that is easy to learn. No. Like it's not an easy dance. It just has certain moves that are like sort of like point moves that yeah. people learned. Um, but the dance itself is not a dance that people just learned like Gangnam style or something like it's a very difficult highly synchronized dance like shiny is famous for yes um so uh at the end of their promotion for ring ding dong like this song is a hit people love it Mm -hmm. because it's crazy but we have to i would say we should point out that in this Come back, I guess, with this EP. They, for the first time, came out with a much darker concept than they yeah. had previously had before. Now they're getting, their faces don't have that much makeup on them quite yet, but they're starting to get a little bit crazier or more like dramatic and stylized in their hairstyles. Yes. Um, and also in their costumes. Like now they're wearing um, like fur and leather and it's black and it has chains and like mesh. Um, so they're still wearing sort of like the same textures and patterns that they were wearing before but now they're in like blacks and yeah. grays. And um, Mino has like massive anime hair like mm-hmm. it is huge and feathered. Yeah and um, Jean Young has the that like undercut bleach. ombre yeah, somehow. Yeah, yeah. It's like the bottom layer the like tips is, of his like bangs and side are But then the hair on the top of it of is kind of orange it like looks it's very odd. It's But it's also like real cool. And iconic like yes. that is like iconic shiny um, that particular look. Um, I really loved that Ring Ding Dong is labeled as Afro Electro. Oh. That's the genre of music. Okay. Because apparently the beat is made of uh, bongo drums. Oh. That's how they make okay. the beat of it. They're like, okay. yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but so that song, it topped multiple charts. Um, but I think is. The best part about it is that it became the number one band song uh, f- before college entrance exams in uh, South Korea because it was, like, too catchy. Yes. <laughs> so you weren't allowed to play it or listen to it while people were studying for exams. Yeah, because it'll really – it'll screw them up. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, coming off the back of their success of Ring Ding Dong, uh, Shiny's second television show started airing in January 2010. And that we've mentioned this before, but that show was called Shiny's Hello Baby. Mm-hmm. Um, Twelve episodes of Shiny helped – Hoping to raise a little toddler named Yugun. A tiny tot and raised by other slightly larger tots. Yes. <laughs> they are really so young in it. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, but it leads us to my favorite shining quote of all time, which is John Young staring at the camera saying, is this the reality you wanted? <laughs> in like utter frustration after being forced to do something like a monkey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, most this uh, hello baby is sort of easy to find on the internet I feel it's like, all on youtube is it all i thought it that, is, like okay it as of this moment it okay. is all on youtube english subbed i thought it was one of those things where it's like episode seven has part two and part four but part three is gone or i'm pretty sure it's all, all there. there okay i know that the when i watched it originally i watched the entire thing on youtube and i 
uh, decided to rewatch it recently, and so just looked at it to make sure that it was still there. Okay. And I'm pretty sure all of it is okay. still there. That's one of the ones I like put on a hard drive years ago, mm-hmm. like waiting for it to disappear just in case. <laughs> um, but it's funny and good. Um, mm-hmm. So that was 2009, the year of us. <laughs> yes, and on that EP, um, just to sort of keep track of the hand Shiny's playing in the creation of their own music, um, that EP, Year of Us. Key and Mino have a song that they wrote together on it. It's called Get Down. And Onu also has a song uh, that he wrote himself called The Name I Loved. Yeah. so Which they're... was originally also recorded as a, as a solo for him. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, they're, like, doing it. They're having a little bit more of a hand in mm-hmm. what they're doing. Um, okay. Then we have in July, <laughs> July 2010. <laughs> Lucifer. Yes. Released on July 19th, 2010. Here is another, like, massive, shiny hit that is, you know. It it took (laughs) over. It was, like, unbelievably successful right off the bat, and it was truly like it's a showstopper track because the i mean as you just heard the beat itself is very driving and it like demands your attention but it's over dramatic yeah it's, it's all hell <laughs> but um basically the entire song is a metaphor for like the, her the chorus is her whisper is the lucifer mm-hmm. um so that just you know you get it right yeah. <laughs> it's, it's over the top um but the dance itself is incredible we've talked specifically about the dance practice version where to means sure it's like an optical <laughs> illusion in it um, um, but this dance is crazy. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely insane. Um, it's it was. I feel like for a couple of years, it was like the dance to learn if you wanted mm-hmm. to impress people, like at a oh cake, yeah, at, at like you know, if you wanted people to be like, oh shit. You would learn Lucifer. Yeah. Um, and this was like kind of coming off of this harder image that Ring Ding Dong allowed them to create. This was like a very sharp futuristic concept. So um, Mino had like terrible short bangs. Um, Key He's has that fifth element haircut. Shaved totally mm-hmm. on one side. Uh, what else? Jong Yun was doing the like the same hair that I had in sixth grade where you yep. like just do like half half rows on the top and then clip it with a little clippy so the that little, it kind like, of flies. butterfly yeah. clips. Yeah. yeah, it's like butterfly clip Timine corners. Timine has uh, long hair in it. Mm-hmm. Looks beautiful. I don't remember what Onu's hair looks like. Onu has... Um, it's like a regular... It's kind of melody in the back, but they kind of like piled it. Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Sort of side. like curly and thick and big. Yeah. Um, and they're wearing like... They're wearing leather. They're wearing like... Uh, Plastic. Yeah, they're that, wearing like, that shiny, shiny, like, shiny mylar. Fake. Yeah, yeah, like they're wearing all kinds of crazy stuff. They look like they just stepped off the set of Xenon Girl of the 21st Century. Yeah, and like another part of this that was like kind of crazy is that like unfortunately during this comeback, um, Jung Young got very hurt mm-hmm. um, and couldn't fully. Like, he couldn't dance, but they were like, well, we can't leave him out. So they had this crazy idea where for a couple of comeback stages, Jong Yoon was in a cage yep. at the front of the stage while the rest of them did the dance, and he would dramatically, like, pull on the bar. How was power is that? Like, oh, it was so, it was crazy, but, like, But if good. anyone was meant to be in a cage and, like, sell it on a stage, no one could do that yeah. better than Kim Jong Yoon. Yeah, no, like, it no was one great. Um, this album always kind of gives me a little bit of a giggle because um, the album is called Lucifer. That was their title track as well. Um, the members actually have seven or writing credits on seven different tracks of the full album. So they're getting like more and more of a hand on it. Um, but in addition to this, is this album is a good example of like the weird dichotomy that shiny can have or like, not necessarily dichotomy, but the way that Shiny can kind of do anything yeah. and nail it because this album goes from that crazy Lucifer song to AO and Hello. Oh my God, I love AO. I love AO and I love <laughs> Hello as well. But like, so the Hello is their other music video that they did for this album. It and was a repackage. Yeah, it was their repackage. Oh, thank you. Um, but so they came out with a music video for this song, Hello, which is all about, like, um, being nervous and getting ready for a date and, like, going up and knocking on the door and, like, saying hello, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm picking you up for our date. And so it's 
all of the members like with their crazy Lucifer hair, but like in very um, I don't know. They're like getting ready for. They their tried date to like be like comb cute. it in nice boy ways. Like he, they just like combed Key's hair over the, the shaved, shaved part. part. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's a very yeah. So Hello's the repackage after Lucifer, and like that's another like hella cute music video. Because yeah, yeah, they're all like Oni's waiting in the hallway with flowers, and like Key's trying to make a phone call, and like Mino's sitting in a convertible. Yeah, being, and like, Temin is like wrapping a stuffed bear he's just like in his room like, like playing with toys he's yeah. being the baby for sure like <laughs> he's like playing with toys hello, and it's so hello hello um yeah so that's a super nice one um and this album preceded their first world tour. Yes. So, like, now they're sort of um, really establishing themselves and their popularity um, because now they're ready to take the show on the road. Yeah. December 26, 2010 is when they kicked off Shiny World, their mm-hmm. very first tour. It was an Asian tour. They did eight cities. Um, and the tour lasted until November 2011. So, like we said in our concert episode... Tours are usually not like every weekend for a month. It's like they drag, like they take, yeah. they take all year or whatever. Like technically, EXO is still on tour right yeah. now since With whatever they like last like, November or whatever. Shit. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that's how it goes. Um, so Shiny World, that was a big milestone for them. Um, 2011 is kind of an interesting year for Shiny because they basically didn't do any Korean promotion for all of 2011. No. This is when they make their Japanese debut, and they make their Japanese debut by first remaking several of their original hits in Japanese. Yes. So like Replay, Love Like Oxygen, Juliet, like they all get, ja- I guess, yeah, the, yeah, that, that would sounds be the, right. That's the right order. And they completely um, reshot the music videos. Like, yeah, they didn't do different con. Like they just reshot no, no. the music videos. The, it is almost a shot for shot remake, but of they're the older and cuter, they're a little <laughs> bit older, and now they're singing in Japanese. Yeah. But it's the same song and the same masks. If in Juliet, and I just like else love is. the Japanese version of Juliet because Mino has great, like these wonderful green pants on that are just so good. <laughs> is he not wearing the same exact pants in the? Yeah, Korean but he's version? a skinny little boy. It's three years old. <laughs> Older, he's like, he's he's a little fills bit his older pants now. out better. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. so their Japanese debut. They mm-hmm. also, um, in June, were the first Asian artist to ever perform at Abbey Road Studios in London, which is where the Beatles used to record. Yes, I was just going to bring up that this was a year that um, sort of... They set a lot of records in this year. Um, replay became the high... Uh, replay... Their Japanese debut made them the highest selling Korean group in Japan at the time. Um, they, like Shannon just said, Abbey Road. And then they also, later on in the same year, uh, at the sixth London Korean Film Festival, they were uh, chosen to be the opening act in which they did an hour long show, uh, making them the first Korean artists to hold an independent concert in London. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. 2011 was, I feel like, their, like their Hallyu year mm-hmm. where they were like, doing stuff Stepping outside, outside, of Korea. outside of Korea and like starting to make a name for themselves outside of their country. Yeah. So then we get to 2012. Shine is back. Shine is back. Shine is back. Here we go. Yeah, Shiny's back. Hard to fade that intro out. It's I know. So I didn't. I didn't want. I didn't want to stop it at any point. <laughs> but know, we can't play the tell. whole song. We can't play the whole song, unfortunately. But go out and listen to it because Sherlock is an iconic. It's so song. iconic, and they still do it. Like, didn't they do it both times we saw them? They definitely did it when we saw them at the Hollywood okay. Bowl. But at the at KCON, didn't they do everybody? Yeah. Okay, you're right. But I don't they, think they did Sherlock. You're right. Wait, did they do Sherlock? I don't know. They might have. They definitely did everybody. I know as that. Well. They definitely. I know that did for everybody. sure. And they one hundred percent did Sherlock at the Hollywood Bowl. Yes, but anyway, um, it's a song they still do yeah, yeah, constantly yeah. because it's still it, a bop. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it sort of like embodies them. This was the first utterance of Shiny's back, mm-hmm. which then sort of became their rallying which cry. Which is totally forever. their their thing. Yeah. Um, and Sherlock is really interesting. I mean, I think it's kind of gimmicky and dumb and like a waste of album tracks, if you ask me. But like Sherlock is technically two songs, a song called Clue and a song called Note. Mm -hmm. And both songs are basically Sherlock 
but like a bridge is different here or a second verse is different there. They're, yeah. It's like they were like ha- my husband like does composing and stuff and it just seems like they were two demos and no one could agree on which one they liked better. And then they just sort of like Frankenstein to them. But all three are on the album like it's they're the different songs. It's the first three tracks. It's like first is Sherlock. then is, And Sherlock is called Sherlock parentheses Clue plus note close parentheses. And then that's the first track. Second track is Clue. Third track is Note. So it's like you're basically hearing the same song three times in one. It doesn't make – or three times in a row. It doesn't really make sense. However, I will say that the critical claim for Sherlock was very high. Like, mm-hmm. People loved it. And a lot of music reviewers and music critics really liked the concept of the way that they remixed the two songs. Like, yeah. And personally, I, I feel a little like as a I, fan, I feel cheated. I feel cheated. Too many tracks. Yeah, I'm like, like <laughs> this is all the same song three times. Like, give me other things. Um, but music critics loved it. So yeah. Whatever. Um, this is I love Sherlock as an album. Um, the concept I like the concept is very interesting. Mm-hmm. A lot of like acid wash denim like fringe we're starting to get, jewelry a yeah kind of like 70s hippie sort of native american it's like kind of americana i felt like it's the, like, totally a little bit americana i would also say it's getting a little it's this concept i think in both in styling wise like looks aesthetic is sort of like 60s hippie free love mm-hmm. um in that there is some tie-dye and some fringe but also like the photo shoot concepts for the album where they were like in a tent yeah and like, they all had their like, shirts off mm-hmm. and they're skinny and pale and, but they're like in in a place that has lots of like fabric <laughs> on the walls and like like pillows. rugs and pillows and like soft like i don't know like and you're living pic- in like a like a Oh, what's that word? Like a yurt. A yurt, or yeah. Whatever. And the pictures are all like overexposed to kind of look vintage uh-huh. Um but I And like Tamine has really crazy extensions and Mino has like super fluffy, it's so fluffy. hair. Uh like curly. Um so they sort of look a little like grown out. Yes. I guess. And I it's one of my favorite album covers because it's like a little ukulele and all of their hands mm-hmm. and they have like, they have like paint, paint splatters. Yeah. And I just love it. Um this album and the single went to number 1 on the Gone chart in Korea and number 1. I mean, excuse me, number 1 on the Gone chart in Korea and number 5 on the Billboard World charts. Um it's also Sherlock is listed as one of the 50 greatest boy band songs of all time by Rolling Stone. And quote proves how innovative and experimental k-pop can get Ooh, shiny shiny's back i love it um so then as soon as they finished their promotions for sherlock in march in april they started their very first japanese tour which was called shiny world 2012 they mm-hmm. did 20 concerts in japan and it was attended by 200,000 people which is holds the record for the most people for korean acts first Japanese tour. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as they finished that on July 21st, 2012, they did Shiny World 2, which was a Korean concert, uh, but it was was only six shows in four cities, but still, Shiny World 2 doing lots of tours. And due to all of this, in November that year, they won the Ministry of Culture Award, which was awarded by the government entity, the Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism, that has a lot to do with K-pop and its promotion around the world. Mm -hmm. So recognized as world leaders in K-pop. Not only recognized as world leaders, also this year they became, all five members of SHINee became stockholders in SM. So they're also being recognized now as like pillars of the company of SM. Make that money, baby. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so 2012 was like a great year for Shiny after like sort of being away in Mm -hmm. 2011. Um, Quote, unquote, unquote. away because they were in Japan. Uh, 2013 kicked off on what I think is a beautiful high note for them. Um, They had a... A TV show that was like a spe- like a winter special. Like it, it started on like a holiday where everybody would be home to like watch a TV show. Uh, it was called Shiny's One Fine Day. Uh, it was ten episodes um, where basically all the members of Shiny got to take separate vacations Mm -hmm. without each other and they could do whatever they wanted yep and they were so excited to like all they got to pick where they wanted to go and um onu chose thailand john young went to japan um timin went to switzerland Switzerland. and then mino was so mad because he He chose to go to england and so did he (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> oh my god, those first couple of episodes where he <sighs> keeps trying to like ditch Key, but like he can't. Know. He knows he can't. Because so they, like, Mino is like um, Mino and Key are really funny because they are the same age. They're born in the same year, and so they have like a um, because of the way that seniority like plays such a huge role in Korean culture. Um, the because they're the same age or the same born in the same year, they are able to have like a little bit more of like a true bu- brotherly like yes. bickering. Nobody is like above the other right. in any kind of hierarchy. And so. uh, Mino is a little bit more like anal retention in that he had like very diligently planned his trip to England and like had an itinerary for every single day. And he got himself like a nice Airbnb to stay Mm -hmm. in and he had his whole plan and he was staying in a hostel and had no idea what he wanted to do. Yeah, he just like, that was it. That was all he knew. And so for the first day he like followed Mino around and Mino was like, leave me alone! (laughs) Stop following me! And he was like, ha ha, no! (laughs) And just kept following. It's highly entertaining if you can find One Fine Day I, I yeah, strongly it's recommend it's really it. really good um, so it, while One Fine Day is airing is now uh, Shiny kicking off a like a pretty massive undertaking as far as album releases mm-hmm. go with their first in this album set which was Dream Girl The Misconceptions of You mm-hmm. this so 2013 is seeing uh, their third studio album but what they chose to do for their third studio album is split it into two parts the first one like shannon just said was called the misconceptions of you the second one was called the misconceptions of me and all together as a set it is referred to as the misconceptions of us um so we'll start by talking about dream girl uh which is a definitely like more mature concept i would say they're coming out in suits they're saying like hey we're more grown up they're still super colorful and like peacocky Mm -hmm. Um, misconceptions of you was said to be sort of like the um, perceptions and ideas that shiny has of themselves and their world Mm -hmm. that's what it it was supposed to be like shiny's point of view Um, and the song itself dream girl is their lead single it's called an acid electro funk tune that's I the, love like, the genre of it. I it's love one it. of my favorites because of the very audible um, funk guitar in mm-hmm. the back. Yeah, it's really great. The music video is by DigiPetty, which is a company that we talked about on our music video episode. The music video is really cool um, because as it is like dream girl it's about you know the the person of your dreams and so the music video is really trippy it has them like going through walls and like falling on trampolines spinning like, and the like and yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah it like digitally like cuts out and like layers over pixelated images and stuff like it's really cool the styling was also like super out there because it was you know it was a dream so they were wearing extremely mismatched outfits like Really mm-hmm. crazy printed suits. Loud patterns. Um, the choreography for Dream Girl is incredible. Uh, they used mic stands mm-hmm. as part of the choreography and they like spin on them and they drag them around. And there's a really famous, incredible music show performance where they were doing Dream Girl and somebody's mic stand just totally snaps in half. And like, if nobody pointed this, if you want, like, I'll post it on the Twitter or whatever, but if nobody like pointed this out to you, you, you would, would never, never know. Notice. But, like, it breaks, and they all keep doing their choreography, and, like, Key kicks something over there. And And then, then, like... Mino kicks something up. Like, they sort of like two or three of them like subtly work it into their their regular choreography as they're to changing get the broken one off the stage kick it off and then with and then when it's when there's one missing mm-hmm. like the member like knows John that, like, Young's in the middle and so, so, so like, he doesn't have a mic stand for that part and like it is so professional it's such yeah. a great example of their high high level of professionalism like shiny is in a lot of ways untouchable when it comes to their stage performances and this is a great example of that um this whole album also marks um a much larger hand in the creative aspects of this uh on the members part Timin actually worked on the choreography uh for this album Jean Young did a lot of the lyrics key and mino wrote most of the raps for this album um um, and I have I have a little quote from uh, Jean Young on their new album, which says, We want to showcase music that is colorful and yet full of personality and a group that leads the trend and brings to everyone many different unique sides. So they had a very um, specific and complex concept for this whole two-set album. Yeah. 
Um, and then very shortly after Dream Girl, like they really stacked this. That mm-hmm. Dream Girl was February, and then in April uh, they released the second half of this misconception series. Why so serious? The misconceptions of me. Mm-hmm. And now I have to make a confession. I hate this song. <laughs> I hate this song too. It's Why So Serious is an awful Frankenstein tune that doesn't make sense. The chorus and the verses, they clash so hard with each other. It's like the song itself is is fighting itself. Yes. I just like I don't enjoy it. I hate and, it. I hate and it. And I never with a and, passion. Yeah. <laughs> I just like I've ne- I've watched the music video a handful of times and like I don't know, I just like don't I don't like it. Sorry, <sighs> sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, whatever. I the album like is cool. <laughs> there are many things about the album that oh, I like. Oh, there's great songs there's on that album. There's really good songs on the album. Um this one like we said it was called The Misconceptions of me and so it had a much darker dreamier concept than the misconceptions of you dream girl was like bright colors uh why so serious is much darker tones Mm -hmm. um it they wanted to and this is a quote from john young that says they wanted to show our worldviews um it has a deep and rough sound that embodies our unique personality and musical sensations um so it had it was sort of like the first part of it was the way that Shiny sees the world, and then the second part of it is how they perceive the world to see Shiny. Yeah, um, and the album art for both of them is like very interesting. It's like it's sort of like a cutout of one of their faces, mm-hmm. and then like the others are just kind of like decoupaged, like yeah. in. It's like very abstract and, and a sort of like collaged image. Yeah, and mm-hmm. then when they finished why so serious oh and the other thing about why so serious that i feel like makes it weird and like maybe is another reason why like i don't think it's that popular among show walls is that jong yoon had was hurt and isn't even in the music yeah, video he's not in it he at was all. just not there mm-hmm. so it always felt like kind of an incomplete promotion yeah and like it's a weird song but one fun fact about the album why so serious not the song itself but the album includes a song called sleepless night which i've talked about before when we did our 10th episode um that's a song that is super beautiful always makes me cry it is written which i didn't know it's written by changmin from tvxq and it is the first time that changmin wrote a song for someone that wasn't tvxq oh that's so sweet that's Mm -hmm. and that's such a good one too yeah i love that song it's beautiful um, let's see. So then in like June 2013, they released another Japanese album, did Shiny World 13 in Japan, 15 concerts, nine cities, like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in August is when they finally released the like repackage, the misconceptions of us, which was both of those albums we talked about before together smashed into one new album art new pictures, new all that stuff we talked about on new the album packaging. episodes, new everything. Um, Maybe one or two new songs, but mostly it was, I think, a, a literal repackaging. Yeah. More so than a additional songs promotion. Yeah. Um, and then 2013 was a busy year for sure, uh, because then in October they had yet another comeback. Um, and this was Chinese Everybody. Mm-hmm. This was an EP. So now we're having in one year they released two studio albums, th- which technically count as just one. Right. And now immediately after that, another EP. Another EP for everybody, and everybody is very an interesting track. It like it's it was like Shiny's first uh, dip into EDM. Mm-hmm. Um, it has like it, it has that like early EDM that like Skrillex kind of like yeah. uh, kind of sound to it. Um, the styling was very interesting. They were wearing like uniforms of all different like military-ish mm-hmm. uniforms, like lots of shoulder lots of shoulder pads and like caps and those um, and those pants that like aviators wore that had that were like big the sat like the, the saddle the, pants yeah, yeah the like the ones that like aviators and directors wore that are like big in the thigh uh-huh. and thin in the calf yeah like old timey like, uniforms but like made of like red pleather yeah um, with like aviator sunglasses oh my god that image on the album cover where they all have their <gasps> aviators on oh my god so good so good but so then good. also another like half of that styling um they wore really big hats and skirts skirts and hats with like a two foot brim on Mm -hmm. them that if you like when they would perform with them on stage if they zoomed in on their face 
it was just like black because the hat yeah, black was or so white around them. big. So basically, like everybody, the EP, the color scheme of it is red, white, and black. Yeah, I would say, um, and maybe gray because everybody has like the title track of everybody EDM military style, like crazy, crazy dance number on par. I would say with Lucifer. Yes. Then the other side like flip side b side second single they're going to promote is uh symptoms which is a ballad Mm -hmm. and um they also have another really great ballad on that called close the door and so for symptoms and close the door they're wearing like white and black and gray and they're wearing like high like fashion clothes so much makeup on all of them too so much makeup one of my favorite symptoms performances john young has like rhinestones in the corners of his eyes in the everybody video they all have heavy makeup like stones on their eyes and in their individual shots in the videos all of them are wearing no less than 12 rings Mm -hmm. Like all so many rings, and the music video they're on like a massive like chessboard, and like Jung Yoon has a like, cane, and he's like breaking shit, and like Taemin has like fur and like a million yeah. cross necklaces on. It's very they have like key like a wind up key yeah. on their back. They're like creepy, mm-hmm. creepy dolls. I have the, no the idea. The beginning of that song we which we've played before on this podcast. The beginning of the song over and over says "Wake up, wake up, everybody, wake up." That's like mm-hmm. the the hook of this song. Um, but the choreography itself is Mino literally wake turning on, like yeah. pushing a button, plugging in the other members so that they like elect come on with this like electric shock mm-hmm. um, and like wake up yeah. and do this dance. Um, but then you have the other side of that, of this like ridiculously high, fa- I've, I don't know, I've, I want to say they look like fr- like Paris Fashion Week yeah, uh, like, with these crazy hats. What are they, and uh, these, editorial, like, yes. that's what, like fashion that's mm-hmm. not for wearing, yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's what they're doing. Uh-huh. It was very, it was we, intense. Total... Yeah, very, very strong starch dichotomy in this in this EP. Um, but at the end of 2013, um, a very big moment. God, I remember how much I cried. Um, they won their first Daesang, which is like, there are so many different end of year award shows mm-hmm. in Korea, and we should do an episode about them sometime. But um, and they have these like massive awards called the Day Songs, and then there's like Pon Songs and whatever. And sometimes they'll give them to like four artists. I kind of don't understand how they decide if it matters because it seems like they give the awards to too many people. Whatever, it's a big deal. Um, so they won Artist of the Year at the Melon Music Awards. Oh, and they cried so much. Yeah, in and their silly everybody plaid yeah, jackets. Yeah, they're in plaid jackets just and they have too much sobbing. eyeliner on and they're just like sobbing their eyeliner off. And they're um, just in like a big group hug. It's so, uh, so sweet. It's beautiful. It's a really good moment. I'll link it if you yeah. all want to cry. They're, uh, um, they have always been uh, sort of a gentler group, yeah. I think, in terms of their personality and image. Um, like we said, they started as the boys next door, and they have never been afraid to like cry and show their yeah, gratitude. Their, their sweet little stage. hearts. Mm-hmm. Um, so then at the end of 2013, they released a music video uh, for their song, Colorful, which is like a fan song. I feel like we've talked about these a handful of times where mm-hmm. like groups will write a song on an album that's specifically for their fans and like Colorful was one of those, and the music video is just, like, a montage of all the things they did in 2013, and every time I watch it, I cry like a baby, because, like, montages just get me for some reason, um, and at the beginning, they're, like, decorating a Christmas, because it was, like, say, they put it out they at Christmas, Christmas-y? so they, like, put it out at, like, a Christmas, and it was, like, you make my love colorful, and, like, colorful, <laughs> um, Oh, it was great. I love that song. Uh, so that was 2013, which was like, it was a huge year for them. And yeah. it was the year I discovered them. So I always felt like I jumped on the train at a good moment. And it's also a good, uh, like everybody, the EP is a good sort of like sampler plate of mm-hmm. Shiny, I think, because it has everybody, which is that like hard driving dance number. It has symptoms, which is like the best R&B ballad. Oh, yes. Um, colorful, cheesy as shit. Close the door, heart wrencher, like Mm -hmm. an incredible harmony. It shows all of the different sides that Shiny truly has. Yeah, it's a great album. Um, 
Oh, <laughs> thank you. That's important distinction. Um, yeah. Okay, so then 2014, they kicked off in March Shiny World 3. Um, this one was in seven cities, eight shows, uh, 67,000 fans came. Um, it's great. Uh, they put... Uh, that year. So 2014 is another one of those years where they were just like touring and putting out Japanese albums. Mm -hmm. um, they put out two concert albums for Shiny World 2 and Shiny World 3. Um, they did a Japanese album called I'm Your Boy and mm -hmm. another Japanese tour, Shiny World 2014. That was a 30-show tour that ended at the Tokyo Dome. That was their first Tokyo Dome show. We brought up in our concert episode what a big deal mm -hmm. the Tokyo Dome is because it holds like 70,000 people. I think like <laughs> 60,000 or something. something crazy. But it's also, it's a stadium that has a very significant, like historical reputation. Yeah. So it's a big deal and like it's a land milestone moment for groups to be able to play at the Tokyo Dome. Yes. Um, so that was 2014, no Korean comebacks that year. Um, just lots and lots of concerts. Mm -hmm. Um, then 2015, they again kicked off the year in May with Shiny World 4, which is, in my opinion, the best Shiny World. <laughs> it's so good. I mean, they're all good, but, like, they, they all have, like, elements I don't, like, fi in five awful costumes. Ugh. Awful. Three, like, not the best set list. Four, Shiny World 4 <laughs> is the best. <laughs> it's so good. Um, so that was four cities, six shows in May of 2015. Uh, right after that tour kicked off is uh, their next full album. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Full Odd. studio album, Odd. Mm -hmm. And it was called, it was actually titled Odd because um, it has a very distinctively different sound and style. <laughs> Oh god, I hate fading them out. I just want to play all these songs forever. Um, but yes, odd. That's the title. That what you just heard oh. is the title track called "View," um, and this song itself um, has sort of less powerful and precise choreography because according to the group and the choreographers that worked on it they wanted to show or highlight like the more relaxed groove that a group that has been together for seven years has because mm. at this point they have um, like a, a teamwork and inner strength that they wanted to showcase through less precise choreography because they can still work together without being 100% in sync and like maybe pantomiming something the way that in everybody they like build Made an a airplane. plane out of their bodies. Now they're going to sort of like the whole concept of view in the music video is them like escaping from their world as idols and they sort of like steal thrift store clothes. So they're wearing like looser style mismatchy clothes mm -hmm. and they're just sort of like laying back a little bit. Yeah. And this is a bop. Like, mm -hmm. God View is such a good song. Yeah. And the, I, I, like, looking through all of this today, I feel like if I had to pick, a, like, one shiny album, Odd Is It for me, like, it's yeah. perfect. It's such a good album. It's a great album from beginning to end. It has, um, it was released in the summer, so it has sort of this, like, I like to call it sort of a watery yeah, style Yeah, that's the only way I can describe yeah. it. It's like, um, the... I feel like it is the musical embodiment of jumping into a pool. Yes, exactly. Like, <laughs> That's like the only way I can just, it totally just like feels that yeah. way. But the members themselves, like Mino in particular, has admitted um, that he was really nervous about the reception of Odd. Um, and they titled it Odd because it is a, a sort of a departure from their typical style. Um, so they were worried about how it was going to be received. Um, but it debuted at number one. Yeah. Um, on the, actually, it debuted at number one on the Billboard World charts too, and it stayed there, and it stayed in the top ten for three consecutive weeks. So it was a, it was an immediate success. People yeah, loved it. It was a smash. I for sure loved it. Mm -hmm. And the styling, like we said, like when they were doing View on stage, they were definitely wearing like thrift store clothes, like purposefully, you know, like university, like University of some random, you know, Tennessee college. Yeah. Like they just had like he's wearing actual... a basketball jersey that says Girl Power. Love it. Mino is like a white tank top that says Franklin on yes. it. 
Like it's, and the it's, best white jeans. Like, we've said this before, but like I think Odd is like peak shiny beauty. Like they all look oh one hundred percent. They good. all look so gorgeous. Mino has the most. I mean Mino. Uh, well, Mino is beautiful. He's blonde <laughs> in it, but Tamine has the most beautiful dye job in the world. It's like platinum white to lavender ombre, and it's so gorgeous. I've read that people that Tamine fans sometimes call that his onion hair because it's like the color of like oh, a purple yeah. onion. Yeah, I can see that, and he always has a bowl cut. So yes, um, but the op like for the other track that they perform when they were you know doing their comebacks for Odd, the other track was this song called Odd Eye, and the styling for that was like the sharp, like sharp, scary, like scary rich guy like i don't know they were wearing like really su- sharp suits and key straight up wears an eye patch mm-hmm. no they look like swashbuckling pirate princes dark pirate princes is what i okay. think of when i think of odd eye not only because there's a literal eye patch mm-hmm. mino wears like a long trench coat blazer with no shirt underneath all of them are wearing all black me uh tamin has like a billowy pirate black button-up shirt with, Uh like, super skinny Jack Skellington pinstripe pants. Like, they look like they're there to, like, sail you away underneath the skull and crossbones. Yeah. Yeah. So that was... I mean, I'm into it, but that's their... (laughs) That's that's the concept. Yeah, it was. We're still watery, but now we're on a pirate ship instead of like a summertime yacht. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so that was awesome. That was like, oh, the summer of 2015 was great. View was so good. Mm-hmm. Um, and like to build on top of what was already an incredible album, odd. I, I had. It's got to be one of my favorite shiny albums for sure. And then the repackage, married to the music, was is my is I think my favorite shiny repackage i truly think it is not necessarily because i love all of the songs Mm -hmm. um but the aesthetic of it i adored it's very rocky horror yes um which i read actually so um they were asked like why they did sort of a halloween thing because the repackage came out in august right um Yes. So the repackaged Marriage of the Music came out in August. The theme for the music video is that, um, quote unquote, music is like embodied by this faceless woman in a veil. And she throws this party and steals a body part from each member in order to build her like perfect person and then marry him. Um, so it includes like he getting his head chopped yes. off and like Jean Young loses his mouth after she kisses him. Like all these crazy things happen. Confession. I like here's like this is my one like bad shawl thing. I have seen Married to the Music one time. Once. And I will never watch it again. I did not enjoy watching Shiny Fall Apart. Like it is body <laughs> it's straight up body horror. Like and I I didn't like it. I didn't like it. But there's thank God there's a dance version of the music video. Yeah. I've watched that a billion times. But the actual music video, get it away from me. I don't. I will never I will never watch it. I don't like it. <laughs> I love the music video. <laughs> I love it so much in that like B horror movie like schlock Mm -hmm. gore kind of way it just makes me laugh like they vomit confetti in it like it's just i love it i i I love it i love it um key's decapitated head starts singing and mino does like a (gasps) what like look at the camera it's so it's so great i love it um but married to the music so apparently there is a it is halloween themed right Right. came out in august but apparently it's a tradition in korea to see horror movies in the summertime Ah. because it is like a um i don't know if it's like a wives tale or whatever but it's like a quote unquote fact in korea i I say that because i don't know if this is an actual scientific fact but they agree in Korea, that it that your body temperature cools down while watching scary movies. So in the summertime, they go watch okay. scary movies, and so that's why Shiny did a horror theme for Mary. I to the see, music. yeah, the styling of it was like really, really fun. Um, lots of like bow ties made of like you know plastic skeleton bones hands. and little hands or and like eyeballs. Bats. The bow ties made of bats, and they're boutonnieres of like a skull or something. And Key had like um, 
tall, like almost bride of Frankenstein hair. Mm-hmm. Like it's permed and like pushed up really high. Yeah, he calls it his like broccoli hair because he looks like a little a little stick of broccoli. Jean Young has like a little palm tree ponytail right sticking right on top of yeah. his head. Um, and the dance for Mary to the Music is different from their typical dances because for one, it relies a lot on backup dancers mm-hmm. um, because it has a lot of lifts in it. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool. It's also one of their only music videos or not, excuse me, not music videos. It's one of their only dances that is made to be filmed. Mm -hmm. Um, A large part of the beginning of it, as each member sings their verse, uh, the camera follows them around, much like uh, the camera follows around Exo and Growl. Mm -hmm. Um, This is like a a performance where when you watch it on stage, if you're looking for the other members, like they're standing on the sides waiting for their parts. (laughs) For their turn. (laughs) But yeah, there's like the coolest part ever where like all the backup dancers like get down and put their feet up and then Mm -hmm. Shiny is like leaning on, like leaning on their feet like yeah they do like a back bend like they're going to fall on the ground but they land on the backup dancers like feet and do like a little a little dance and then they get pushed off Mm -hmm. it's it's super cool it's definitely one of my favorite dances and it is like it's such a good dance song like it's just like it's like just a disco song right like play a clip yeah i'd love to hold on yeah uh Wait up, girl, hold on. So listen, baby. Uh, high and high, yes, I got God in places. The beautiful lady. Hey, near your carry, I'll sue, I'll sue, see, soon. Me, some dang, be the sorry, yeah. Call me, my touch, oh, baby, not my. Oh, y'all gotta finish that one on your own. It's, it's so good. So good. It hadn't even gotten to the best part yet. But yeah, that it's just like a bop. I that was yeah, that was a really, really good one. I mm-hmm. love Married to the Music. So that was 2015. Uh, 2016 starts again with a bunch of Japanese stuff. Uh, another Japanese album called DDD. Um, another Japanese tour, Shiny World 2016. Uh, 20 shows, including three domes this time. So they are selling out those things. Um, and then they did Shiny World 5 starting in September, which was 10 shows in eight countries. That was their actual first, like, for real world tour mm-hmm. that they we missed America, for my wedding. Yeah. <laughs> true. <laughs> Sorry, true. I have to remind myself of that pain forever. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, they, they went to North America. They went to South America. Um, they really started to... Um, finally visit their because they, they've had a growing international fan base for this whole a time. long time um, and so now like for the first time in Shiny World 5 many of their fans are going to be able to see them for the for the first time yes um, and then October 4th 2016 another comeback another full album called One of One uh, this album is fantastic too um, full 90s throwback style we talked about this one in our album episode and that they put it out on cassette tape mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, for the nostalgia factor of it all. Yeah, the whole concept was retro themed, and there's actually elements all the way from like the 1930s to the 19. 90- I mean, not 1930s. Um, 19- actually, there are some elements of the 1930s <laughs> in terms of like their um, a few of their like shoulder pads. Or Whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, 1970s to ni- to 90s mm-hmm. was the um, key decades of influence yes so the title track was one of one um it's just like a really fun 90s like i don't know it's just a new jack swing um tune it's a bop the boys are wearing um very broad shouldered brightly colored suits with big gaudy gold chains Mm -hmm. um uh, the other costume that they debuted with this was like keys wearing overalls with like only one strap buckled and and like a bucket bucket hat hat and grandpa glasses in like like crazy pattern jackets and weird cowboy boots like they were wearing such crazy hodgepodge outfits in this comeback um i loved it and this was also yeah mino's first first shot at what he calls celebrity hair Uh uh-huh because his hair was like silver yeah and when he's it first never came out. not had until like until this moment he had never not had like some variation of a natural hair color uh-huh. and now he <laughs> they originally dyed it this like terrible silvery blue gray color that mm-hmm. looked a mess um especially on the stage lights during their shiny world 5 tour like it did not look good Mm-mm. but then it became just white and, and it that was, was beautiful lovely 
um yeah so that was so one of one it was the shit but they want like they were winning music shit like you know mm-hmm. continuing to do their shiny thing yeah went to number two on the billboard world albums um one of one the single itself was number three on the billboard world charts as well so um they made it into the top five with both the overall album and also the single itself yeah um and then in no so that was october and then right after in november quick repackage uh that is now called one and one Mm -hmm. was the name of the repackage and the uh title track on this one was called tell me what to do love it love i love this song Mm -hmm. um it felt like it's one of those things that like feels very it felt very shiny but also was somehow very different from everything they'd ever done um the choreography on stage involved like ropes scarves and like sashes yeah long strings that would then be like tied around their wrists or lifted under their feet or whatever because they Mm -hmm. were doing these kind of or even wrapped around timmy's neck and it's like a contemporary i mean shiny does this incredible thing which i love so much about them that like such a huge piece of their dance is performance art um, it tells a story, and this is a great example of that. In yeah. that, um, the song itself is about a couple that's basically um, their love is like fading, mm-hmm. and so uh, they're saying, "Tell me what to do in order to to re- save this, or- spark this relationship, because I can't imagine my life without you." Um, and so it is a dramatic piece, but the the dance itself, it's them sort of being like tangled in this web of scarves, yeah, um, and like not knowing how to get out of it, and it's it's awesome. It's it's very beautiful. The music video is like, is also feels very different from from Shiny in that it's like they don't often do like story music videos, mm-hmm. and this was one where they're like, I don't know, their kids like living in like a crack den, abandoned building, and Mino has a hot girlfriend, and yep. Tamina is jealous. And then, like, every, you know, they're all just, like, playing with, like, knives and lighters and, like, graffiti walls. And it's dripping and there's mattresses on the floor. Yeah, and it's, it's just, just kind of, like... pointless teen delinquency, living in an abandoned building, street rat, lost boy kind of... Yeah. Whatever. And then Timmin kills Mino. Yeah. He accidentally blows... He blows his car up. Uh, maybe accidentally. Yeah, it's maybe like, not it's like accidentally. It, it seems to be like he maybe did it on purpose, but then the moment it happens immediately, reg- like, oh, yeah. no, I've killed him. But then it also really ends with all of them, like, leaning dramatically on a car, including the girlfriend, to be like, it's all okay now. Like, yeah. My worry. favorite thing that came out of Tell Me What To Do is this little, like, meme of Timmy uh, on the music video shoot, like, turning and being like, am I supposed to be happy that he's dead? <laughs> <laughs> Mino getting really offended. Um, that was fun. Yeah. So, the co- uh, concept for the stage costumes of Tell Me What to Do is very different from that like abandoned warehouse, though, mm-hmm. because they're wearing like sort of crushed velvet and silk and silk and low cut tops and blazers, and they look real fancy yeah. on stage. Um, they're very grungy in the music video and all of the like the album. I love the album jacket. Uh, pictures for one and one though because they're just like in the woods and wearing like flannel and like laying in piles in the woods oh that (sighs) album jacket has one of my favorite shiny photos of all time the one where they're like all stacked on top of they're like in a dog pile yes that one one? yes it is (laughs) because that is the what i always show as proof that shiny is the most beautiful group yeah they do all look really good in that picture Mm -hmm. and i love a pile of boys i really do um so that was 2016 Mm -hmm. 2017 we got another japanese year they put out their album five which i'm guessing was the fifth i didn't count them japanese albums are because Mm -hmm. we haven't brought this up on the show before and we like should and it'll come up but like japanese record labels unlike korean record labels are not interested at all in trying to sell stuff outside of japan they don't care so they put up 30 second versions of the music video so that you will buy a physical music video DVD. Mm-hmm. They don't sell the music on iTunes. Like, it's, it's really all, hard to get. It's like country locked, basically. Yeah. So um, we have not really talked. We've just briefly mentioned, like, when they come out with Japanese stuff. Because, honestly, a lot of their Japanese stuff, we've never heard. Yeah. We don't have access.
access to it. With the exception of like watching Japanese concert DVDs, mm-hmm. which is the only time I ever hear. Because yeah, it's really hard to get yeah. this stuff. It's weird. And some of their Japanese songs are really beautiful. Like they have a lot of really gorgeous Japanese ballads that mm-hmm. have the most incredible five part harmonies in them. Yeah. Um, but I've only ever seen like kind of poor audio quality uh, DVD rips on YouTube of yeah. their like concert footage it because sucks. you can't actually buy the track. It's such a bummer. It sucks. Um, in July uh, 2017, Obama mentioned Shiny in a speech. Uh, we all like lost it, collectively lost yeah. our shit for like a super long time. And it birthed uh, my favorite Shiny meme of all time, which is the Obama Shawol meme yes. of him like coming into Michelle, like going up to Michelle and being like, have you heard what I've won? And like, whatever. Yeah. It's really cute. Lots of Obama <laughs> Shiny memes that were really good. Um. So at this point, that's like the first nine years mm-hmm. of Shiny's career. And like, there's a lot to say about that, right? Yeah. I mean, they have at this point in time, like we're talking 2016, um, 2017, they have really established their legacy and their reputation as um very high quality artists. Yes. Um, they have, they s- sort of have what's called like the shiny trend, um, which is what a term that people use to refer to uh, their trend setting yeah. qualities, I guess, of like starting certain fads. Um, they always sort of retained that, that boyish charm, like we said. Um, but one thing I found interesting in the development of their concepts mm-hmm. um, as they sort of like went back and forth between this like hot couture and like street fashion, like mm-hmm. they sort of walk the line between those is that, the SM visual and art directing department, whenever coming up with um, new shiny concepts for their upcoming albums, rather than working with famous photographers and like well-known artists already, they specifically seek out up-and-coming artists. Oh, nice! So that they, so that shiny always has like a unique and sort of fresh take to whatever it is that they're doing. They like specifically find sort of more unknown Ooh. stylists. That's very cool and interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, like, we have confirmation, like, at least out of his mouth, that, like, he helps with a mm-hmm. lot of the styling sometimes, too, because, like we said, he, like, loves fashion and yeah. definitely has, like, and I think you can see it. Like, sometimes you're like, that was, you see an outfit, and you're like, that was key. Definitely. That was definitely key. Um And they've also, like, at this point, um, I made sure to write down a lot of sort of their um, critical reviews, I guess. Um, From a non-fan perspective, what do, like, real journalists have to say about this? Yeah, so real journalists. uh, These quotes in particular come from the New York Times. Um, They, after, so Shiny was a part of the SM Town tour that played at the Madison Square Garden. Yes, they made a documentary about it Mm -hmm. that we've brought up a bajillion times. times. Uh, But so they... They were quoted as having, um, well, so New York Times named Shiny as being the, quote, most ambitious of the groups that were featured on that SM That's Town a good tour. Word. Yeah, I think so too. They were said to have peerless choreography and uh, a unique style of music that is different from your usual K pop. They're identified as having technicolor visuals, choreography as coordinated as ballet, and wildly adventurous hit songs, which Ooh. I think are. Um, really on the nose descriptors. Yeah. That's really good. I yeah, I've always felt like like I don't know, I just feel so blessed that like <laughs> but of course like but it wasn't an accident. Like of course this is the group that I like the most. Like there's a reason. Like yeah. I don't stand them so hard like just because. Like I truly think that they are something incredibly special. Yeah, and we've brought up a lot of times that um, K-pop choreography is really like the key piece of what drew us in as fans of K-pop mm-hmm. in general. And Shiny uh, SM in general has more of like a performative theatrical styling and concept to a lot of their music uh-huh. and a lot of their staging. Right. But Shiny in particular, like I mentioned earlier, has that sort of like performance art aspect of their work that I in part- I specifically like really love that aspect of it that there's this um I mean I just love watching like modern dance and contemporary dance and so to watch a choreography that 
like I said, tells a story um, and sort of like takes you on a journey or whatever through mm-hmm. the song. I love that, especially because I don't speak Korean, so I don't necessarily know what the song is about. Um, like I don't know the lyrics that they're singing, but I can watch their performance of Symptoms or Everybody or Dream Girl, whatever it is. Like, and you get the meaning, you get the story, or the feeling behind the song because they're they're expressing it and yeah. acting it out for you. Definitely. No, it's all it's all good. Um, so speaking of good, is it should we move on to like some of our like we wanted to get together like a little list of some of our favorite shiny songs that might not be ones like I will say that like I stand by with the like minor exception of why so serious I stand by like all of their promoted singles totally like, everything we just mentioned listen to those they're literally all good all their title tracks like not only the lead single but whatever secondary single they promoted with that comeback 100 percent. it's all good support them all um but we but because they have so much music like 174 they, and counting like yeah. we said so we wanted to sort of highlight some like b-sides like or ones you like might not have heard yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so our first category that we chose was was bops, mm-hmm, you know. which we consider to be like dance tunes. Sure. They make you bop your head, whatever, yeah. right? That's what yeah. we call a bop. Um, my first one is Prism. Good this choice. was off of One of One. Uh, they did promote it on music shows, and it's deadly. Ooh, watch out! Like, oh, watch so those Prism performances; good. it'll get you. But ooh, this it, it's a good one. It's a good mm-hmm. one. I love Prism. So sexy yeah. and like groovy. Oh, dig it. Um, my first one is an older song. It's called Runaway. Um, I do not remember what album is off of. Um, Dream Girl. Dream Girl. Oh, okay. So Runaway is from Dream Girl. Uh, super catchy and just like lighthearted. I love to sing along to it. It's one of the songs that I actually almost know all of the words to, even though I have no idea what I'm saying. I've listened to it so much that I've but learned all of the sounds. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I can very accurately sing along to Runaway. <laughs> um, but I love that song. Yeah, that's a that's a that's that's just like a feel good. Mm-hmm. That's a feel good one for sure. Um, the next one on my list is like, I've, I've, I've just this morning on Twitter saw someone arguing is the best Chinese song ever. And that's Excuse Me, Miss. Yes. 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 This one was off of the next piece of. Yes, it, that one's on misconceptions of me. The mm-hmm. why so serious? The second half of the yeah. Dream Girl. Excuse me, Miss is uh, my number one favorite shiny performance. Yes. So, like, if if somebody asks me to show them something of shiny, I always show them the DVD concert version of Excuse Me, Miss. And even when I listen, when I listen to the, uh, I have the album version on my phone. But at the end of it, can you play the end where Jean yeah. Young shouts? Absolutely. The crowd? And and I'll play the part where they all make fun where they all oh, good. Tim, good, I'll good, do good, them good, both. Good, good, good. So yeah, there's a there's an extra like there's an extra bridge mm-hmm. in this song in this live version that uh isn't in the real thing and then they do this great outro. Here we go. Yeah, so that's great. And there's like, I'm sure there's like this, you guys might have be familiar with it, but there's this uh, meme that's like a screaming seagull with like red <laughs> eyes and people have used have used that like call, make some noise. Yeah, that's our dear Jean Hyung hyping up the crowd. And I have this one, just while we're on the topic, I have to, this funny clip of uh, like, so there's like, a, I just said, there's like an extra bridge in the song that they that they add in for this live performance and Jong in his Jong way like gives it his all and is you know like doing his scream singing thing which of There's course like a, a, th- a guttural 
belt that he uses uh, in the performance. And, like, immediately after this song, they, like, changed costumes. And as soon as they get back on stage, he instantly makes fun of himself for yeah. the way that he does it. And then all the members imita- imitate it, and it's so Here great. we go. Listen. That's Mino. <laughs> and then Timmy comes in with his. <laughs> so that's that was so that was Mino, Onu, and Timmy, respectively, making fun of it. Oh God. Uh, Excuse me, miss. Uh, it's so good. Oh, love it. Love oh, it. That was my pick. What's your next pick? Um, my next pick is, um, I got to say Married to the Music. That would be mine, because too. Because it's, I uh, I just love that song. It's such a great dance tune. It's definitely, I do feel like it's probably one of their best. Like, you could slip it in at a party and, like, it would go no on. One, no one would would flip an eye. Um, I don't know. My next two, like, I wrote down too many. We tried to keep it at three, but, like, <laughs> meh, how do I do that? Um. One, I couldn't decide if it was a bop or a ballad. I really don't know, but I wrote it down anyway, and that's Symptoms, which is from the Everybody album. And I don't like, think I it's don't a know, bop. I don't know how to categorize that song, though. It's so. a ballad. It's definitely a ballad. Sure. But it seems like, yeah, I don't know. It's too. It feels too sexy to like count it as a ballad, but I could if you want me to. It's a ballad in the way that like 2 p.m.'s Pull and Pull is a ballad. Okay, yeah, you sure, know? sure, Like, sure. it's a slow jam. Okay, then I take it back, and my next, then my last vibe is beautiful which is from dream girl dream girl <laughs> beautiful was the dream girl comeback b-side mm-hmm. um and that's just like a another like in the same vein of runaway like that's another just like fun like jumpy like it makes you want to jump mm-hmm. like it's got that kind of like beat to it um and also when they performed it Mino wore a very low tank top and <laughs> I love when he wears low tank top so that might have colored my di- no I just like that song yeah uh that's a good one I would guess my last one it's so hard to choose I have like 10 I know. written down uh, I don't know okay uh I'm gonna choose lovesick Oh, good one. Um, Lovesick is from their Odd album. Uh, it was the second single that they promoted in conjunction with View, and it's sort of the response or sequel to Replay. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really great. I love that song. They, like, worked in, like, a couple of moves from Replay into the choreography. Mm-hmm. And, and like- there's a little bit of, like, a melodic echo in the instrumentation of of lovesick. Yeah, that's a really good one. Great choice. Okay, ca- next category, let's move on to ballads. Mm-hmm. Um which again was really hard because I don't know what ca- like I feel like a ballad is a certain thing and a slow song is a different like, I don't know, whatever. Well, These we'll are- just call this ballads and slow jams because we're <laughs> sure. definite both of us wrote down symptoms as a song that yeah. we like need to include in this section. Sure. Um so we'll put symptoms in this yes. category. So yeah, symptoms mm-hmm. is great. Uh, it, there's amazing performances of it. The lyrics are just like basically like you're my sickness and my medicine. Like yeah. you are ruining my life, but also I need you. Like it's <laughs> it's so dramatic, but it's what Shiny does best. Yeah, um, the really dance good. is great. It's one of those awesome songs where like I guess because it's not a ballad because they dance to it. Yes. So that's what makes it a slow jam and not a ballad is yeah. that it is a slow tempo song, but they do have choreography to it the yeah. entire time. Like most of their ballads, they just stand there and sing. Like in uh, Close the Door, yes. which is one that I will recommend. Um, Close the Door, we mentioned as uh, coming out with their Everybody EP. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was sort of the like high fashion side of it where they wore those crazy those hats. Those big old hats. Yeah. Um, my first ballad choice I've uh, brought up on the podcast before, but it's a very old shiny song from their second album uh, called Romantic. Mm. Or was it off like the first album? It's early. That's it's all very I know. early on, um, and it has really bad English, but it's so beautiful, and it like has that very '90s like R and B boys to men kind of feel to it, mm-hmm. and I just like I've, I'll play it forever and ever. I love romantic. Yeah, I do too. It took me a while because the the English in it is terrible, but um, but it is a, a truly beautiful song. Um, my next 
ballad recommendation is called The Name I Loved. Um, and this is an old song. I'm trying to look up which album it came out on. The Year of Us. So this was on the 2009. Ring Ding Dong album. Yes. Uh, Ring Ding Dong album. Uh, it's called The Name I Loved. But they have uh, a few really beautiful, like, more recent performances of it with all five members, um, like, from a few years ago. Really beautiful song. Has gorgeous harmonies. Like, this is for sure a ballad. They usually sing it just, like, standing at mic stands or sitting in chairs. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe there's one version that I really love where they're actually in their uh, – Symptoms costumes from like some stage of some music show performance of Symptoms. They like brought out a. They didn't. I don't think they that this was televised. Like it wasn't on oh, on air. It's like a fan cam. Yeah, it's or a something? fan cam. Um, because the 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 version of it that's on YouTube, it, it's like filmed from the side. Oh. Um, but it's the them and their Symptoms costumes, like sitting in chairs, and there somebody brought a piano on stage, and there's like a pianist sing, uh, that plays with them. And I don't know if they were doing it like in, for a sound check or whatever, just like as a fan gift. They just sat on these stools and they sang the song. And it's beautiful. Oh, that's gorgeous. Um, my next ballad choice is also quite is also older. It's off of the Lucifer album, um, and the song is called Life. Um, and they ended, I want to say, Shiny World 2 with this song. And, like, that's what I always, like, associate it with. Um, because, like, he totally starts to lose it, like, very early in the song, like, looking out at the crowd. Um, so it always just, like, makes me feel things. And, like, I just remember, like, little Shiny and their little teary eyes. <laughs> um, but it's just, like, one of those, like, really, like, giving it to you, like, ballads, like... Um, and yeah, it's just, it's very nice. <laughs> it's nice. And, uh, yeah, life. Yeah. The last ballad I'll recommend, uh, is called Honesty. Oh. And, uh, what album is Honesty for? Sherlock. Sherlock. Okay. So a little bit older. Um, this song is one of the first songs that is like completely composed by the members themselves. Um, it, and it is a little bit different from some of their other songs in that it focuses, it, like the instrumentation of it is just a guitar. It's like a simple acoustic plucky guitar. Um, and then like gorgeous full harmonies over it. And it's, it's really beautiful. Um, I believe it was Onu and Mino that wrote the lyrics. I thought it was Jongyun, but maybe it was Onu. Um, I don't I remember can, now. Let me check that, like, to be sure. Yeah, fact check me. But while I'm fact checking, I know I brought this up, this um, this song up in a couple of episodes. Like, oh, this was my shiny song that always makes me cry because I, before even like hearing the lyrics, like just the sound of the song made me cry. Like, it sort of gets that. Uh, it gets that out of you. I have. Well, this was one of their fan songs, right? Yes. Like one of the songs that was it specifically for written fans. for the fans as like Wikipedia a, credits Choi Min Ho and J Kim Jong Yun oh, as the writers of this song. Um, perfect. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember if it was Onu or Jong Yun. It was quoted in my wedding. Like mm -hmm. that's what how good it's so it's got such good lyrics you could quote it in a wedding. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, di I didn't pick that one because I brought it up before, but I'm glad you did because it's worth song. mentioning. Um, my last one is also like an old, an old ballad that they ended a concert with. I feel like that's like those kinds of ballads like get me the most, but this one's called One. It was on Hello, which is the repackage mm. to Lucifer. Okay. Yes. So. Shiny one. Again, this is just like another one of those like really <laughs> like <laughs> dramatic, like long ballady ballads that they like used to end a concert way back in the day. Um, and like the ends of concerts are always like very emotional because it seems like it's the time where they can like take a breath and look at all of the thousands and thousands of people. And then it gets them, it, uh, it understandably gets them all choked yeah. up to like, oh, all these people are here for us. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, okay. So that's ballads. I will also say, like, uh, two of my favorite ballads of theirs ever are, like, Japanese songs that are hard to get a uh, hold of. Yeah. Like, Moonlight Waltz and... Moon River Waltz. Or Moon River Waltz. And then what's that I'm other... I'm with you. I'm with you. God. Those are so good. Mm -hmm. But again, I only have them in crappy, ripped 
quality Japan. Yeah. Uh, Making it too hard to get my shiny. I know. But our last category, uh, we just sort of called outliers <laughs> because, like we've mentioned many times, shiny is on the weirder side of K-pop mm -hmm. spectrum. Um, so they have a lot of, like, very unique sounding songs. Um, and so we just sort of were like, you know, pick those those songs and, like, they're not really dance pops. They're not ballads. They're not slow jams. They're just like weird other songs. Things only Shiny can do. Yeah. Um, so what's yours? My what's first, first one, one is uh, is actually a Japanese one, but it's easy to get. One of the only ones that, e that is easy to get. It's called Your Number. Um, a full music video of this exists on SM's YouTube channel. So like it's one of the few Japanese music videos you can see in full. Um, but like we've mentioned before, I feel like often their Japanese albums have more like rich multi-part harmonies that they don't typically do in their Korean music. Um, and your number just like has like the fullest harmonies. And it's just like this really, they just keep, can I get your number? Like that's mm -hmm. the whole premise of the song. And they're wearing great suits and the dance is really good. And it's just a, it's just a favorite. Yeah. This is a storytelling song that talks about how like, oh, they were, the they, their hands for, touch at the bookstore. They're yeah, reaching for. They the were same like book. going for a walk, and then it started to rain. So he ran into a bookstore, and then he like touched hands with someone. And we were looking at the same book. Can I get your number? Um, and the choreography acts out the mm -hmm. the dance to it. Um, it that's a great, great yeah. Tune. I love your number. Um, my favorite, uh, or one of my recommendations for these like random songs is, uh, called Queen of New York, mm. which is an, oh, will you play the beginning of it? Absolutely. That's my favorite part. This is a really weird song that has a, a did a, during their concert tour, um, have a very elaborate stage set up for it that started with, uh, like a singing in the rain cover mm -hmm. um and then to like have introduced like the new york skyline or whatever yeah. and then the boys came okay out here, the here's song. the beginning yeah the way she walks the way she talks <laughs> this girl she like a queen <laughs> yeah, I love, I that, love song. that song. It's so good. And that doesn't even that didn't even include the like full breakdown oh. when they like get into it. Um, I love that song. It's so weird, but. It's, yeah, that's a really good choice. It puts a smile on my face. Um, I guess I'll do my next like uh, like another pretty weird one, um, just to like to even it out. Um, mine is a shiny. Uh, it's a shiny song. They're all shiny. Songs. <laughs> uh, this is off the Lucifer album, and it's called Obsession. Oh, good one. And it is like so dramatic, and I feel like <laughs> I just like it because. It's just like one of those things that like fully encapsulates how dramatic Jong was. Like, yeah, he wrote the lyrics to this, song. and it like and it has like in, it has a really intense guitar solo mm. in the middle, and it's just like one of those like monster ballads, and like oh, they're and just it like, has, like yelling. that like electro violin. <laughs> yeah, uh, like ding, 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 ding. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's really intense, and it's like a very interesting sh song. So I like had to include it. Mm -hmm. Obsession. Another song, uh, my next one also has a very interesting instrumentation to mm -hmm. it. It's called Orgel. Mm. Um, it's also called Music Box. This was written by Jong as well. Um, and because it's called Music Box, it has like a sort of music box, like plunky, plinky m melody to it. Let me play the it. beginning just for like yeah. two seconds. So that's what we're working with. It mm -hmm. like it's it keeps that kind of tone yeah. like the whole way. And through. they have like a very steady, a uh, little bit lower tone vocals, um, slow vocals over that that beat. Um, and this is a song that they perform like just standing still um, uh -huh. on stage. It's very very powerful. 
Yeah, that's good. Um, I feel like a couple of my other deep cuts you already mentioned, so like fabulous. The only thing like this, like this probably should have been in my ballad category, but like again, I like didn't know how to decide what a ballad was. But this is truly one of my favorite Chinese songs of all time. It's off the Odd album, and it's called Farewell, My Love. Mm. Um, it's just like a hella dramatic. Like if they had a video for it, it would be a rip your shirt in the rain kind of like. <laughs> but Shiny doesn't do that. They don't do that. But if they did. Like this, that's the kind of vibe of this song. Like it's one of those like breakup songs. Like, oh God! Yeah, yeah. But like it's really good. I love "Farewell My Love." That's a good one. Um, Odd. The album has several beautiful, beautiful ballads to it for sure. Um, my last recommendation is not a ballad at all. Um, it is a very, very goofy song that puts a smile on my face every time I hear it. It's called Girls, Girls, Girls. <laughs> yes. And uh, it's from the Misconceptions of Us um, album set. I don't remember which which one or if it was part of the, like, total repackage. I don't know. But anyway, um, it has a hilarious performance. Like, please, please yeah. do yourself a favor and go to YouTube and type in shiny girls, 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 because you will see them perform this on stage at one of their world tours. And in it, all five of them, it's like, they're, I guess they're supposed to be like a hair salon or yeah. something because <laughs> the five of them are sitting in like hair salon chairs. They're pink all wearing robes. pink fuzzy bathrobes. Most of them have like little fuzzy... Uh, like headbands on to like keep your hair out of your face when you like wash your face or get a uh -huh. facial or something. They're like supposed to be in a spa. And Tamin is asking his youngs, his older brothers, for dating advice. Yeah. And so the whole lyrics of the song is each member gets a verse telling Tamin how to get girls. And each one is giving them, giving him like very member specific advice. Yeah, he's like, go shopping with the girl every day. Yeah, Zhan like, Young is like, write her poetry. <laughs> Mino's like, just be hot and good at sports. <laughs> like I think Onu tells them to like uh, listen to her and tell jokes or something. But so it's just like it's such a funny song in the chorus. It's just like girls, girls, girls. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that's a really good choice. I love that. Um, but truly, in all honesty, all shiny music is good. So like, give it all a shot if you're asking me. But there's just a couple of like good recommendations from us that yeah. we hope you will appreciate. Also, I think I need you to cut out me singing Girls, 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 because I'm pretty sure I just sang the Got 7 song, Girls, Yeah, because there's this Girls, 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 and Shiny's Girls, 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 There it is, there it is. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, that's fine. Girls. Yeah. Oh, it's so cute. Girls. Okay. Um, so we've got like nine years of Shiny, and I feel like before we get into this next segment, we should talk about like some of Shiny's like controversies mm -hmm. through the years. They have fortunately, like compared to other groups, had like a pretty relatively like clean like yeah, they've had, they haven't gotten in too much trouble. Um, one thing that's like uh, was written down as like a scandal, which doesn't seem like a scandal at all, but in 2009, all of them got swine flu like in a <laughs> row. <laughs> <laughs> which is terrible. That's awesome. Um, but in 2010, we brought this up really early on in our Valentine's Day episode. Jong Yoon was the first mm -hmm. I uh, idol to get like caught by paparazzi in a dating scandal. Yeah, we mentioned the publication Dispatch yes. as being the sort of like TMZ of K-pop, and uh, they sort of made their name for themselves as a tabloid uh, with Jong Young's dating scandal. Yeah, he, him and actress Shin Se Kyung. They like met at a park in the middle of the night and they were just like sharing earbuds and like listening to music and holding. It's like truly the most innocent, <laughs> precious thing ever. But it was it was a huge deal yeah. because none that hadn't happened to anyone mm -hmm. before. And the fact that it happened to Shiny is like pretty crazy. Yeah, because um, not only was it the first time that a dating scandal for K-pop idols had broke. broken in that way. But it was also, this is a group that had a very sweet boy next door charm about them. And so to like have a group that's not like the beast, sexy, masculine idols, like be dating, I think was maybe a little bit more 
had a had a higher shock value. Yeah, and they'd only been a group for like two years. Mm-hmm. And they like, were pretty new. As we've talked about before with dating scandals, it seems like the the longer the group has existed, the cooler people are with their mm-hmm. with the idols dating. So like this is early to have a scandal, and it sucked. Um, but then like yeah, then there was like poor Jong like hurt his ankle, had mm-hmm. to have surgery, got in a car accident. Like, he had to miss, like, a lot of stuff yeah. for, like, injuries and things. At a certain point, Onu had to have, um, he had vocal nodes, mm-hmm. and so, or nodules, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. it's called, um, and he had to have surgery to get them removed. Um, so he was actually, like, on vocal rest for even part of their promotion. There's, like, some show that they're, what is that, that Chinese variety show where Victoria's one of the hosts, and they're, I like, I can't remember a, the name of it. It's so fun, though. Um, but Onu, it, so Anyway, they're like promoting a, an album mm-hmm. or whatever, uh, and all five of them are there. But Onu is still on speak. vocal rest, <laughs> so he like can't speak the whole time. Um, they do a good job with it anyway, though. Um, another like actually kind of scandal. Like again, like compared to like Hollywood celebrities or whatever. Like most of the time, K-pop scandals are nothing, and mm-hmm. we'll do a scandal episode sometime. But um, in March 2013, like Onu had like a couple of months of being like a bit of a tabloid bad boy um like again in like the quote unquote unquote, unquote, bad boy um it started with he caught some paparazzi one day he gave them the middle finger and then they were like what a rude boy um and then he got caught being out with after school's junga and he was Mm. smoking but he's wearing like a leather like a letterman jacket like a fake letterman jacket he looks like an extra in greece and these like (laughs) pictures like look he's smoking it out with a girl but like he looks he still looks like a little goobery boy like it's barely anything but like that was a bit of something Mm -hmm. so like pre everybody in 2013 like that was when like Tamien was on we got married and there was like mm-hmm. they were all like doing a lot of stuff but like onu like was not he just like was not on camera like for pretty much most of that year he like removed himself like because mm-hmm. of this bit of scandal um in january 2014 pictures of Tamien smoking came out and like blah i don't know people smoke whatever who cares um but then uh like a more recent i thought it was funny that it came back um in october of last year Tamien got in trouble again he's trying to quit smoking and he started hashtag vape life um, <laughs> but he was out playing pool with uh jimin from bts and he was vaping inside and so then all of the shawals and all of the armies got very angry because they were like he's being a bad example and like <laughs> I remember the armies being like how dare he vape in front of Jimin not in front of him uh, but hey he's trying <laughs> yeah he's trying to quit you guys a lot of people in Korea smoke okay it's yeah. very very common no truly like the stats are like men between like 19 and 25 it's like 90% of them smoke <laughs> that's it's absurd. just you know that's people have their little habits um, but then like the first like actual real scandal mm-hmm. that ever happened to Shiny was not that long ago go um in august of 2017 Ooh, this is gonna be like a weird thing to talk about because i guess we should include a little bit of a warning uh sexual assault trigger warning yes is insert here sure uh onu was accused of sexual assault i guess mm-hmm. is what the is the word that they used um uh, in August of 2017, um, for be he was very drunk at a club. Um, he'd like gone out dancing and drinking with some of his friends. Um, was very drunk. Was at a club where there was like a platform that people could dance on. Yeah. And the story basically goes that he um, touched a woman's leg, uh, and then she like told him to stop, and then he did it again. Mm-hmm. Um, and she like complained to her boyfriend or whatever. And the I boyfriend think- called the cops. Yeah, and the boyfriend called the cops. And she went on. Um, later, it was revealed that she was actually pressured by her boyfriend to, like, play up the incident in order to, like, try and get because money out of Because he was famous. Like- yeah. But witnesses from both the bartender and the, um, the like, other people that were there claim that Onu, like, was just so wasted. Falling down drunk he, and was, like, like, grabbing her leg to, like, try to stand yeah, up. Yeah, grabbing it, thinking that it was, like, a pole and not a person. And that um, after, when he was questioned by the police, like, he was questioned while he was intoxicated. And so he initially admitted to it because he didn't, he was just like, oh, like, if that's what I did, then that's what, then that's then what I did. If that's what she 
said, then that's what I did. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, he worked like because again like the next day or whatever like he admitted to not really remembering what had happened because of the level of intoxication he was at um so he like did a lot to try and like be as cooperative as possible with the police eventually the um suit was dropped the charges were dropped um because it did come out that the the woman had exaggerated and i guess like sort of you know yeah i feel like it's one of the like and i, I you know i'm always like believe women and like I totally yeah. get it but and I feel like the actual like real problem of this whole thing is that he was way too drunk mm -hmm. and like he has a problem with alcohol and like that is something that like we all probably could have told you a couple years ago based yeah. on funny stories that are told like quote unquote funny yeah, stories like he has a drinking problem mm -hmm. and I do know that he has like been punishing himself literally every day since yeah and, because like, what so Tamin had Tamin and Jun Young both had comebacks around the same time. Yeah. Um and Shiny was originally scheduled to have a comeback, I believe, in October of 2017. Mm -hmm. Um and then because of this scandal, they pushed that comeback. They pushed it. Definitely. Yeah. Um and they ended up never having it because shortly after this, uh, of course, we had the the tragedy of Jean Young, which we'll talk about in a moment. But so um August of 2017 sort of like started this um like six to seven, eight month slump. This of weird shiny, sort of hiatus like, where mm -hmm, like this like dark nothing cloud was happening. over shiny where Onu like completely went into hiding. Um after this whole yeah, scandal because broke. he was supposed to be on a drama mm -hmm. and he, he got recast. removed himself. Yeah. He was like, because he just, I like again, like I, 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 I don't think that he did anything to intentionally hurt somebody. Like I don't think he's that kind of person. Mm -hmm. But like, which is wrongs, not to say that like if if that woman felt violated and then uncomfortable she's right. by his actions, then that's one hundred percent in her right. Um, but I think. I don't know. This yeah. is like a it's a it's, it's a hard thing to because you don't want to as a fan like excuse things excuse because I don't excuse it like I'm a, no, I'm not I'm upset I'm like mm -hmm. and I'm also like very like I remember when as the stories were coming out being like so angry at whoever the hell he was hanging out with mm -hmm. because one of the friends in the circle was like well we were pretty sure he blacked out at the second club and we insisted on going somewhere else and so like I feel like yeah, the real like, lesson no here is like of each watch other. your drinks and watch out who you hang like hang mm -hmm. out with better people like I was yeah. just disappointed that he was hanging out with the kind of people that would let him get to that yeah. kind of point where anything like that would happen in the first place mm -hmm. so it was disappointing in in a lot of different in ways. a lot of ways all right how do we do this okay um so now I guess we need to have like a change in our background music. Yeah. Um, dim the lights as we move on to the the tragic portion of Shiny's history. Um, so, as a a warning, I suppose um, I do think that many many K-pop fans today, uh, whether you're a fan of Shiny or not, you know of Jean Young and you know of his passing. Um, and so, for those of us who are sensitive to this topic just be aware that mm -hmm. that is what we are about to talk about yes um so december 18th 2017 mm -hmm. um kim jong-un left this world uh by his own hand yes and i like i don't i, I don't want to make it like all about me but what a horrible day that was it, yes um, that was awful I, I just i don't think it was something any of us you know ever it's not something you anticipate ever to happen no um, um Jean Young was always a very sensitive person mm -hmm. and he was always very open and honest with his emotions and his sensitivity um one he we didn't really mention this in the uh timeline discography of shiny but both Tabine and Jean Young have done a lot of solo work yes um and 
through his solo artistry, Jean Young not only um, poured a lot of his emotion, heart and soul into his music, but also uh, started having a radio show called Blue Night with Jean yes. Young. Um, and in that radio show and also like in the promotion and, and creation of his own music was always very open about the fact that he suffered from depression. Yes. Um, he mental health is stigmatized pretty much everywhere, the U.S. included. Um, it is particularly misunderstood in South Korea. Um, mental health services are not widely accept, uh, accepted or accessible. Um, Jean Young revealed actually in his uh, suicide note that one thing that really um, he struggled with was that when he sought help for his depression, he was told by doctors that he would always feel that way because it was just his personality. So um, he really didn't receive the help that he that he tried to get for himself. Yes. Um, but so to learn of his passing, of his suicide, um, was of course like a shock and a devastating loss. But it was it was not. It wasn't out of entirely nowhere. out of the blue. In that we knew, we knew uh, Jean Young's heart. What? Yeah. Um, and something that I just like, if I could have a soapbox moment for a second, like. A thing that I know, like, a listener or two has asked us and, like, a question that I've seen go around a lot of times is, like, oh, like, we, let, we should talk about, like, the pressures of, like, being an idol. And I just, like, not to say that being famous is some kind of easy thing, but, like, I just really feel like it needs to be said that, like, Jong Yun didn't take his life because being a celebrity is hard. Right. He did it because he had a chemical imbalance in his brain and yes. it could have happened if he was an office worker or a farmer mm -hmm. or a whatever. Depression and self-harm and these issues affect people all over the world of all different jobs and 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 money statuses and sexualities and Ethnicities. races and yeah. like this is this stuff is real and it really happens and I just like I just want it out there that like if this is something that you are struggling with or somebody that you know is like please get help because you are needed in this world and i just if you i know there's resources are all over the world but if you live in the u.s the hotline for the suicide prevention hotline is 1-800-273-8255 8255 there are people who are who want to help you and mm -hmm. we want you to have help like this this is a tragedy that like could have been prevented mm -hmm. and we are all going to spend the rest of our lives like grieving and Absolutely. um it's just it's it just fucking sucks mm -hmm. like there's kind of no yeah. other way around it and but it, i i agree that it is important to draw the distinction that like this was um an issue of mental health and not an issue of like social pressures. Um, this wasn't caused by the pressure of fame. It was a, me a mental health yeah. issue. Um, and John Young, I think to blame it on like, Oh, well, it's so hard to be an idol. Like to, um, just sort of like dismiss it. It, fe it feels uh, like it, it's it feels simplifying dismissive. something that's so much bigger than just like, oh, it's too hard to be an idol. Mm -hmm. Like, because uh, this, like, Korea has unfortunately one of the highest suicide rates in the world. So, like, mm -hmm. this has nothing to do with being an idol. Like, because yeah. very few people are idols. And, like, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I also think that uh, using that as sort of an excuse, it, to me, it feels disrespectful to the level of love, devotion, and dedication that Jong had for Shiny and his yeah. members because he, even throughout admitting all of his uh, struggles with depression, always said that performing was what made him the happiest. Like He was happy when he was on stage, whether that was as a solo artist with his fans or together with his members as a part of Shiny. Like, that's what he held nearest and dearest to his heart. So to you know, excuse his decision uh, to end his life as, as and to something. blame it on con some kind of big evil industry. I feel like yeah, is unfair. It's, and it's like, unfair to to Jong and to Shiny as well. Yeah. Um, so that was December, mm -hmm. and here we are in June. Um, yes. Shiny had their 
uh, t- their 10th anniversary mm-hmm. was May 25th. I would say before we start talking about their recent comeback, um, after Jong's death, so b- oh, before yes, Jong's death, um, they, Shiny originally had a, a s- series of Japanese concerts already scheduled. Yes. And then Jong, um, and it was very apparent that like he had been planning this for, for quite a while. Yes. Um, we won't really go into the details of that now, but, um, he made his decision and, uh, afterward the bo- after his funeral and after a few months, like they were supposed to have a concert in February in Japan. Yeah. And so the boys got together and they decided for themselves, for Jong and for the Shawls to continue with their Japanese concerts as scheduled because yes. for them, they have stated since these concerts and even before like in publicizing their decision to continue with these concerts they stated that they were doing it uh to fulfill the promise to their fans that they were still going to be by their side like yes. this was not the end of shiny um and they were gonna go ahead as scheduled yeah one of the lines in their like previous japanese comeback was we're shiny five and we're right by your side mm-hmm. and like that was something that was really important to them and i was you know Thanks to beautiful Shawals, uh, I watched those concerts uh, live <laughs> through crappy live streams, um, and it was it was rough. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like it was very apparent that it was a, that it was a struggle for literally everyone, like in mm-hmm. the building. Um, but they did it, and it was it was such a like stunning and beautiful tribute. And they found these incredible ways to like leave his voice in places mm-hmm. and like. Um, they did their they their last single for the Japanese album was called From Now On, mm-hmm. and um, they kept his voice in it. And they had you know like videos of him on the screen and all of Shiny like saying, and they left an empty microphone in the middle. Um, and it was it was a lot. It was a lot, mm-hmm. um, but they did it. And I've like I've never been more proud of them. And I think all all of the shawls were like ready for and would have been fine if they had hung it up mm-hmm. that night like yeah. but they didn't and mm-hmm. i just like without getting too far into this next comeback thing or we can just like do that right now but like i'm i'm so proud of them absolutely so they so they came back with this they fulfilled the promise of these scheduled previously scheduled tours and then they they disappeared again a little bit like i mean they didn't disappear like timmy was still doing stuff and um like key was on variety shows and stuff like that like they were starting to make appearances again right um but uh they were ramping up Right. For this 10th anniversary comeback. So this May 2018 um, marked their 10th anniversary of being shiny. Right. And in order to celebrate and mark that anniversary, they have come out with um, a an album which is going to be a three-part album series called The Story of Light. Um, and so far, as of this recording, they have released the first part of that. Um, this, like I said, is going to be a three-part series with five songs each. Um, and so they are currently in the middle of promo- – or like sort of toward the end of promoting – that first chunk, those mm-hmm. first five songs, and then next week they're going to release, or I guess this week, as as you're, <laughs> as listening, you're listening to it, um, this week they will be releasing the uh, the second episode part. two. Mm-hmm. Um, so shiny did these Japanese concerts. They pulled themselves together for them, and mm-hmm. then now they're doing this like massive, <laughs> this massive like three part comeback, and I am just in such like awe of them because I feel like there are so after something as horrible as this like there are so many ways that this could have gone Mm -hmm. and I think it's like so beautiful that shiny is like choosing the route of like that we're all going to do this together um you know they like they could have broken up forever or they could have come out and been like hey here we're shiny with a new dance song like did we used to have another member i don't know we don't remember like yes. they are being very upfront about like we have lost someone mm-hmm. we are not okay none of us are okay mm-hmm. like but like this is our job and we are shiny and we love making music and we love being together and we love our fans so like they're just being like a very public facing picture of like what grief looks like. Yes, they are currently being so 
open and honest and straightforward um, about everything, about their decision to come back, which they say is like a lot of time. A lot of people at at first were like some fans were worried that they were pressured to come back by the company, that it wasn't their own decision. Other fans. Well, I won't call them fans, actually. (laughs) Other assholes um, were claiming that the group was trying to like profit off of the tragedy. Um, So the group themselves have come out um, most recently on a show called Radio Star. Um, There you can there's a full English sub version of it on YouTube. It's a fantastic interview um, where they they do a really good job of addressing Jean Young and the group's decision to come back. But in that interview, they state that um, they talked together for a long time about mm-hmm. what to do next um, after the Japanese shows. Like they they didn't know what to do, and so they decided that um, if they didn't come back for this anniversary, then that would be the end of Shiny. And none of them were prepared to do that because all of them have, on many separate occasions throughout the years, stated how they would be together with Shiny forever. Um, So they renewed their contracts with SM and they decided as a group um, to put out what they call the uh, the most (laughs) Shiny-ish album of all, um, which is such a great way of describing it because uh, it's sort of like, well, what does that mean? But you sort of know exactly what it means. Yeah, it's Um, one of those things that's like, it's hard to quantify, but you know it when you hear it. Like like Shiny is a thing. Yeah, Shiny is a a sound and style all of its own. Um, And the boys on that same interview, the Radio Star interview, like they admitted that they they, they sought counseling. Um, Which I think is incredible. Like mm-hmm. that they said on television, like we have been going to counseling for our PTSD, mm-hmm. like is huge because like we said a few minutes ago, like all over the world, but like mental health is like a stigmatized thing. And like, mm-hmm. I, again, I'm just like so proud of them. Like yeah. they are doing everything right. And I know that it like has to be hard. But like, I don't like we all just like we need them and we all need to just like hold hands like through all of this. Yeah. And they're, I think, doing a fantastic job of um, channeling all of the experiences that they're currently going through into their music, which is as artists, that's that's their job. Um, And they're doing a really great job of that. I think that um, we're going to start talking about like the concept. Yeah, let's do that. Um, And I think although overall, like it has a very specific concept, I think in general, you could make a really strong argument that this maybe entire comeback but especially this first album is um the story of acceptance of grief and yeah. like the acceptance of a significant loss and um you know like what not not only in a general sense of like what those emotions and like that sort of roller coaster is like but also in a very personal way of how they are choosing to work through it together yes. as a, as a shiny family um, so let's talk about that for a minute. So this right now, like as of this episode, like we're doing this a little early because it just couldn't wait for the <laughs> other two parts to come out to finish this. But the title track off of this first of three albums is called Good Evening. Um, and it's it's like definitely kind of like it's one of those things that's like it's different, but it's not different. Like it's shiny, but like it's somehow everything else like it's very interesting it sounds it's got that kind of like edm um like vocoded like voice as the sample thing that's mm-hmm. like popular right now somebody i saw used this as like pejorative like they used it pejoratively but like i think it was great somebody said it sounds like if view and free somebody had a baby and i'm like oh i love that they were saying it negatively but no that's a no great, i think that's, that's great. great um it and- has uh, it's sort of, I mean, stylistically, or I should say aesthetically, um, the like color scheme of the album itself is primary colors, right. like red, yellow, and uh, blue. In a recent V Live for their 10th anniversary special. So for their 10th anniversary, Shiny did a fan meet. Mm-hmm. Um, and then immediately after that fan meeting, they did, a, they recorded a V Live special, which is fully on YouTube. It has English subs. I highly recommend it. It's great. Um, but it's just the four of them on stage, no audience. Um, and in they explained that like the album art concept is just red white and blue because um i mean red white and blue red yellow and blue um because they're shiny right givers of light 
all light comes from uh, white light. Mm -hmm. um, and then so they're sort of like going back to basics with these like primary colors to start. those colors can make all the other colors. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned before, they have a fan song called Colorful. You make my life colorful. <laughs> like colors yeah. and shiny is totally a yeah, thing. Yeah, that is their thing. And so um, the sort of color scheme, though, for that's the color scheme for the album art itself. Mm -hmm. um, but the color scheme for their costumes um, and the music music video is I would say like the rainbows that you get when oil is mixed in water mm -hmm. um, it's very like dreamy it's very surreal it's a lot of like pinks and blues and like soft yellows uh -huh. um, it's it's beautiful um, yeah and the like video itself is uh, like a, a bit abstract it's like shiny he's like trapped in this glass mm -hmm. in this glass room and there's a piano but they don't play it and they're unpeeling oranges but they're not eating them and like mm -hmm. um, they're sort of trapped in this mess of um, all of their uh, previous work really yeah. I mean there's callbacks to a lot of their previous singles and music videos in this like first part of the music video where they're on sort of like a sound stage mm -hmm. different sound stages um, but each one of them is it's almost like a claustrophobic level of things that are like strewn about in the rooms there's one set has uh, that has them on like the circular stage which is from the one of one music video mm -hmm. but Key and Mino are like surrounded by um, cameras cameras and TV screens and TV screens like, and just like cords everywhere and this like harsh green lighting and then in another one there's like like Shannon said this glass box that has like plants like and broken pottery everywhere and there's a piano that he like smashes with a bat and they're sort of like almost being like closed in um, by and they're all in the box but they're also seemingly very separate like they're not acknowledging mm -hmm. each other like at all yes like, and then this, and they're sort of like, like the walls are closing in on them in a way. And then they, it comes to a head where the four of them are sitting in chairs and they're covered in plastic, um, almost like they're like suffocating. Suffocating, yeah. And yeah, then, yeah. um, they like, uh, connect physically connect to each other mm -hmm. um, like hands on each other uh, do this like sort of wave move where Tim Mean like turns Onu's face which then uh, turns to like does like a wave like through Mino and Taki to like all turn their heads and then they bust out of their like boxed in sound stage and they're running through the woods mm -hmm. um, and they like run through the woods they finally have smiles on their face yeah. it seems refreshing and open and it all leads them to a well mm -hmm. that they as the uh, the shot comes from below. So like as if the camera's inside the well shooting above um, and the boys like look into it and the a fifth shadow appears from inside, inside the, the well. well. And I don't know if you saw it today, but episode two teaser dropped and yes. it starts at the well. So mm -hmm. it starts I was at the well. I was thinking a week ago, like are all three of these going to go together or be totally separate? And it looks like we're getting like a big old arc. Yeah, so a big story. And I think exciting. the um, the narrative piece to this comeback, I've really enjoyed. Um, the dance to Good Evening is incredible. It's super different from a lot of their other choreography. Um, I would say anything they've ever done. Like 100%. it feels different from anything. The only thing it it sort of harkens back to where it has like a similar style to, I would say, is Timmy's move mm -hmm. because it is the same choreographer. Um, but it is very contemporary and performative. Um, I believe in my own personal humble opinion that this dance is the story of grief and um, coming to terms or beginning to accept a loss by relying on the family around you. The people you. around you, yeah. Mm -hmm. they're the, the specific moment um, right before you talked about when they turn their heads in the chairs, mm -hmm. um, they all have their hands on each other's shoulders, and two of them like fall forward very dramatically, and the other two pull them up, and then they themselves fall forward. And I feel mm -hmm. like that's kind of a really like beautiful, poetic illustration of like sort of what going through grief is like where it's like one of them is going to have a very hard day mm -hmm. and the others are going to have to like lift that person up and then and that person share will that get their day mm -hmm. yeah and then there's this really great moment where uh like when they finally sort of break out of their funk because the the song itself is kind of a jam and like yeah. it has like a, an up tempo beat behind it but the choreography is very slow at the beginning like they are not moving to 
to the beat of the song. They're sitting in chairs, they're moving their heads very deliberately. And then as the song builds, um, like there's a part where Mina like runs across the chairs and jumps in line in front of them. And then the beat drops and they sort of finally start to have a lighter step to it. Background dancers fill the stage. Um, they like come together and do and like go into a shiny dance break yeah, where they're um, all doing the, the for the first time mm-hmm. they're all doing the same thing yeah at the end um yeah it's just like it's really poetic and gorgeous and like and i knew i knew i knew whatever they did would be perfect and like this is perfect mm-hmm. and um well, t- I, I don't know if the episode is out yet or if it'll be out when we do this, but uh, I guessed it on the K-pop cast, another K-pop podcast uh, to talk about Shiny. Um, and you'll hear in that episode that one of their hosts was expecting a super sad, like, let's all cry ballad. Um, and while and they did do that with that mm-hmm. Japanese comeback. Um, and I feel like this was a better choice. Like... Totally. This just seems like the most shiny thing to do. Like, you know, they could have just done a crazy dance bop and ignored it, or they could have, you know, I think if they had done a more ballady ballad, those assholes would have gotten more. Yeah. They're milking the tragedy of this mm-hmm. all. And I feel like they found a so much more, like, beautiful and poetic way to, like, to do this. and Yeah, no, instead, this, I mean, the boys have been insisting that this comeback, they decided to do for themselves Mm -hmm. like in the end they decided you know what we are artists we dedicated our lives to become idols this is what we wanted to do with our lives so we're going to do it and so because of that they're they're taking full advantage of the opportunity to take to tell their own story of what has been going on in their lives up until this point and the album does a great job of sort of having everything you want from shiny because the good evening is like such a jam um it has a fantastic performance performance to it then you have like jump and undercover which are like super groovy um like under jump i want to i would like want to watch someone like vogue to it it has such an incredible like 80s kimchi um, likes k-pop maybe she should oh my god i'll tweet her and ask her let's do it i'm gonna (laughs) slide into kimchi's dms and be like girl you need some jump um kimchi is a is a beautiful (laughs) korean-american drag queen um she loves K-pop. She uses it a lot in her, in her work, and she loves Shiny. So, um, but yeah, but it's it's a song that just is like made for. I, I think well, I first heard it, and I was like, this is like a, a club remix share tune. Oh, that's what it makes me think of. Yeah. Um, and I I I love the sound of it. And then it ends. Uh, the album ends with a song called "You and I." Uh, the Korean title is "Anyang," um, which is a word that can mean both hello and goodbye. Um, and it's a song that was written by Ki, uh, which is, as he said in his own words, it's a song about um, the emotions of losing someone and also that idea that it's okay to be angry in your grief sometimes, um, that grief encompasses a lot of different emotions. And um, in order to accept your grief, you need to accept all range of emotions that come with it. Yeah. Um, so it's beautiful and I can't wait for the other two parts. Yeah. Um, there's a really fantastic, uh, we've obviously just like expounded our deep theories on, on, oh, uh, yes. the deeper meaning of oh, please this, bring this up of this, uh, uh yeah. album, but my favorite fan theory so far, because Shawls are the, the greatest, most softest fandom of all, um, So there's a fan theory that this album has to do with, or this whole comeback has to do with The Little Prince. Um, Because The Little Prince is a book that uh, Jean Young recommended in something called The Secret Readers Club. Um, And in the original image for the comeback teaser, there's a pic, it's four, or excuse me, it's three blocks of blue, yellow, and red with a little fox um, in it. And we're thinking that the fox is from the Fox of Little Prince. Key in one of his uh, promo Instagrams. One of his little spoilies. Mm -hmm. One of his little spoiler Instagrams captioned his photographs, uh, I'm ready to fly. And the little prince, of course, flies from planet to planet. 
visiting different uh, stars and meeting different characters. Um, when the little prince was on planet Earth, he finds a well in the middle of the desert thanks to the advice of the fox. Um, and then lastly, uh, the fox is one of the most important characters in The Little Prince because he is the one that teaches the little prince the meaning of friendship um, and sort of the the fact that um, relationships that you build with others are beautiful, not necessarily because of what they give to you or of, um, you know, because they exist at all, but because of the way that you grow and learn from from the experiences of, of it is being in each other's life. the time that you have wasted for your rose that makes it so important. Yes. Um, yeah, it's I totally, totally think this Little Prince thing is like super intentional. Like it does not seem like a crazy fan theory. It seems very, very appropriate um, for so many reasons. Like like you said, like it was a book that Zhang loved. He was also Petit Zhang was like one mm -hmm. of his like nicknames um, and also one of the like images that was created by a fan and was sort of like used as a memorial to him was this image of a single red rose. Um, and in The Little Prince, the prince loves this rose and he loses, he can't find the star that it's on anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the lessons that he has to like learn and that the fox teaches him is that like your rose is beautiful and important because you loved it. Yes. Um, and... Um, and the little nice. prince states, it doesn't matter that you are not here in person as long as you are here in my heart. Yeah. So it feels really, it feels really purposeful and beautiful. And um, we've been talking for two and a half hours. So I just <laughs> want to like wrap it up a little bit and um, just say that Shiny is so important to me. Um, I love them so much and I'm so proud of them. And I thank them all the time for all the wonderful things that they've brought to my life, um, including a wonderful thing to bond with my best friend because <laughs> I love you and I love that we love shiny together. Um, and I hope that they do exactly what they said that they would and be Shinwa too and keep doing this until they're a yeah. hundred. Like, mm -hmm. um, they already stated that, you know, they were, they were shiny in their teens. They were shiny in their twenties and now they've, they've renewed their contracts in order to continue to be shiny into their thirties. Um, and they have truly impressed me with, uh, the way that they've grown and matured as human beings and also as artists um, in finding their own voice and their very distinct style. Um, and I, I really love them. I love them too. Um, so we're going to take a second to wipe our eyes <laughs> and then we're going to watch Ring Ding Dong as instead of a random because this whole episode was about Shiny. So their most viewed mm -hmm. video is Ring Ding Dong. I've put off watching it all week <laughs> so that I could save it for a genuine reaction for you guys. So we'll be right back in just one second with that. All right, here we go. We're going to end this episode by reacting to the shiny video for Ring Ding Dong. I hope you're all ready. I don't know if I am. but I uh, haven't watched this music video in so in long. So long. I'm, I'm so excited. Okay, here <laughs> we go. Baby. <laughs> All right, so we've got our, our beautiful, shiny boys in their most anime hair of all. Uh, starts out with them all on a rooftop, a big industrial sign that says shiny. shiny behind them. Dance break, or not dance break, but this is like the key. And I couldn't say it right when it started, but that baby is like incredibly, like, uh, <laughs> you know, like that's legendary in itself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That beginning line. So this goes back and forth between being on the roof and being in like this weird white room. It's and like every a weird museum. There's like butterfly. There's, yeah. mi there's mirror. Oh, and the there's like mirrors. And when they walk past the mirrors, like they stay. Like the, uh -huh. the reflection stays, mm -hmm. and the reflection has wings. <laughs> And they're like, this is not a colorful shiny. This is a darker, still skinny pants, but the pants are leather. <laughs> and they're wearing like feathers and black and gray and studs. They look so small. It's like funny because it's like they're trying to look like more grown up and cool with all their studs. But like, look, they're a little teenage. They're just like little bitty boys. I know. Oh, and now they're in a room where they're standing in like six inches of water and like mm -hmm. doing the dance and making a big mess. I 
love Mino's ponytail in this. Yeah, because his mullet is really bad, so yeah. they put it in a sword. It's all curly. <laughs> How many times do they say butterfly in this song? At least four, I would guess. I was going to say at least three. <laughs> More than that. Yeah, this so, music video does not tell a story, really, though. No. It's, it's, it's standard. It's like standard box music video stuff, like just trying to mm-hmm. seem a little fancy. Three there. different sets, mostly just dancing. But tropes, uh, fancy cars. There's like a Rolls Royce that they're just like mm-hmm. in front of. Abandoned building. <laughs> Mino's like sitting in front of some, I don't know, broken concrete. Oh, this song is such a jam. And I hope you all have it stuck in your head. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> will have it stuck in your head. <laughs> definitely the heaviest use of auto tune oh, Chinese for sure. ever had. But it was 2009, like, that was, like, the if there was a time to be using it, it, mm-hmm. <laughs> it was then. So much crimp tear. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't, t- like, I hey, want to, but I can't take them seriously. <laughs> I know, but they're taking it so seriously. They're taking it seriously enough for all of us. I think so. <laughs> oh, my God. My lady. Oh, I love that. I love that. The dance to this is the best. It Y'all gotta great. watch this. Oh, oh, oh here wings. we go. They're sprouting wings. Big black scary wings. Standing on that same roof, but posing dramatically. With and that their looks like wings. a like that shot looks like a weird perfume commercial or something. Yeah, like, or no, you know what it looks like to me? It looks like a poster for Underworld. <gasps> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the moon is like way too big. You can see like the mm-hmm. city behind them, and they're just like perched on this metal thing that says "shiny" <laughs> with their like giant wings. Yeah, it looks like they're about to like drop into the sky and do some vigilante justice. Wow. So that's their most viewed music video by two million views. Mm-hmm. Um, What's their second most viewed? The second is, I believe it's, yeah, Lucifer's at, this is 96 mil, Lucifer's at 94 mil. Oh, okay. Lucifer's a good one. Yeah, it is. Um, you should watch all the shiny music videos. Yes. It's a joy. All of them. Um, okay, recommendations for this week will also be shiny specific because we're not breaking theme on this episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but we are going to switch it up a little because we've recommended so many specific Yeah, uh, y'all songs. have a lot of music to listen to. So. Mm-hmm. so our recommendations are instead going to be like fun little clips and yeah. videos. Um, mine, I will, I will specifically link it everywhere because it's a the like title of the video on the on YouTube is Ing Sub We Got Married Tammy Noun parenthesis seventeen <laughs> hashtag zero three and then all the Korean <laughs> and the date so it'll be very hard to find but I'll link it for you. Um, it's just like one of my favorite shiny moments like of all time. It was very like I saw this episode aired. Like, they must have aired, like, two weeks after I, like, discovered Shiny as a thing. So it's, like, an early Shiny memory for me. Um, But the basic gist of it is they're in Japan doing a tour in the waiting room. And Taemin has gifted, like, through this elaborate scheme involving EXO. You can can watch the whole episode if you want. um, Gives his wife, quote-unquote, like, this bracelet. And so he's trying to watch the A-Pink performance from that day to see if she wore the bracelet. But because they're in Japan and they're trying to, like, stream live television on their phones. And they seem to be in, like, a basement or something. Yeah. It doesn't, it just doesn't go well. They don't. They can't get <laughs> service in order to stream the the performance. So it is, like, a four, three to four member debacle of trying to get to the, just the watch video this little load. clip and it ends so satisfyingly and it makes me laugh every single time um it's just like a really good pure shiny moment yeah. so that's my wreck that's a good one um mine is another uh waiting room moment um 
I don't know what this was filmed for. I feel like he just happened to be filming stuff on his phone and then mm-hmm. like released it. But so shiny is done. We didn't really talk about this, but shiny is, um, done a lot of different commercials and like pro and uh whatever promotional yeah. things for a lot of different companies one of them that is very famous in sh- for shawls uh because it's crazy horrifically embarrassing is this uh chicken commercial no it's um it's a snack called Pusha Pusha. Oh, that's right. And it's basically, ra- it's just ramen. It's dry mm-hmm. ramen in a bag. But you eat it like, But you're dry. just supposed to eat it dry. Like, it's a, yeah. such a silly idea because it's literally just, and you it still comes with the sprinkle mm-hmm. packet of, sa- but it, it's But regardless, anyway. they did a commercial for this snack in which they like had to crump. No, they, they were, they're demonstrating the different ways you can break your Pusha Pusha. Right. So, like, one of them, like, kicks it, and one of them, like, whatever. Like, shakes it, and one of them, like, punches it, or whatever, and one of them, like, crumps and it open. And Yun's is crump. So, yeah. they're, yeah. So, they're in, they're backstage at something, I do not know what it is. But, so, like, Timin Onu, Ki, I believe Ki is filming it. Um, so, you don't really see him, he's, until he, like, turns the camera to himself. Um, but, so, Onu, Ki, Timin, and Mino are just, like, sitting around, like, uh, uh, doing singing the like little rap or from whatever, the commercial from the commercial and, t- and Mino is absentmindedly spraying face like face mister just all around the room yeah he's just like they're just like sort of killing time like singing this song uh, making each other laugh and Mino's like spraying water everywhere and then Jean Young bursts into the door I guess he like heard them from the hallway I don't know where he came from if this was planned or whatever but he he wasn't in the room when they started this bursts into the room at his part crump, in order to sing crump. his part and starts crumping so hard that he slips on the water Mino has has sprayed Been everywhere all over and the floor. just eats it flat on his butt and the hyena laughter they explode. that just takes over the entire waiting room is is a joy it will like add five years yeah, to your life that's I a video swear. i like pull up if i'm like having a bad day and mm-hmm. i just like need to feel cheery for like every time yeah. i get like every time it's in, it's contagious mm-hmm. just like good time laughter fun if you made it all the way through our bias episode and uh you listened to the clip of mino's laugh that shannon played that is from, from this it. video yeah, because yeah. he just like cannot control his hyena cackle um none of them can it's it's a beautiful moment yeah so that was our shiny episode i can't this is crazy it's not crazy i knew it was going to be this long (laughs) but like if you've listened this far you're a hero um but i i really enjoyed talking about this because like as much as i like like i love k-pop and we have this Mm -hmm. like beautiful podcast and we're meeting so many wonderful people and like learning about k-pop that i wouldn't have learned about and like it's wonderful um but like shiny is what brought it to me so like i feel like they deserved they deserved a whole episode. I mean, they deserved a whole episode, A, because it's our show and we can do <laughs> and whatever we, do what we want. want. Um, but also, I mean, it's their 10th anniversary. That's a huge milestone. And um, more specifically, I mean, Shiny is my K-pop part. Like, they are the they are at the heart of yeah. my love for K-pop. And, um, you know, and, and we have a lot of fun on this show. And we have a lot of fun with K-pop because um, that is what K-pop is. It is, it is beautiful and positive and fun. Um, but there's also a lot of, for me in particular, like, I've connected emotionally with not only Shiny, but also, like, Jean Young's solo work um, in the way that, like, you know, you you turn to music for, mm-hmm. for comfort and um, sort of to be, like, the soundtrack of your life in a lot of different ways. And Shiny has something for every moment, whether it's positive or negative. Um, and so I rely on them a lot. Yeah. Uh, and I'm so, so thankful that they decided to come back. Me too. Yeah, it's they they're so wonderful mm-hmm. and I'm happy to have them. Yeah. So whether you have been a Shaw Wolf for years, uh if you don't like Shiny at all, uh but you listen to this anyway, if you're just getting to know them, um please just I ask that you just um be supportive. They're, yeah. They're try they're working really hard. 
And we love them so much. Mm -hmm. Um, If you would like to contact us at all, um, our social media handles are as such uh, at AMA K pop pod on Twitter and Instagram, uh, AMA K AMA K pop pod dot Tumblr dot com for all of our links and AMA K pop pod at gmail dot com. If you want to send us an email and one thing that I've been meaning to mention and keep forgetting, um, if you listen to this podcast on any kind of player like iTunes that has like a rating or review system, if you could leave us a rating and review, it would be so helpful. It just like helps us like bump up in the listening and help other people find us. I know a ton of y'all listen on Spotify, which is great, but Spotify doesn't have anything like that. <laughs> so if you listen on something where you can rate or review, please do. It would be so nice. Um and yeah, we'll be back. I think next week we're probably going to talk about solo artists. Mm-hmm. So that should be fun. And uh, we will see you then. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Listen to some shiny. Chongyun, you're our inspiration. We love you and miss you so much. <laughs>